and welcome to Saturday Night Football. It's the Brisbane Rhinos versus Gold Coast Stingrays. You can see our captains out in midfield. They've had the flipping of the coin. We're going to now see who's defending which end of the field and who's going to kick off. My name is Mark Vollmer. I'm here with the all sports casting team as well as my co-commentator Sam Atchison. Sam, um, tonight's game is pretty important. Give us, the, give us a quick background picture. Well, both teams come into this game three and one. Uh, both of those losses actually to the uh, the Ravens. So, I, I generally cannot split these two teams. Like looking at looking at the numbers, I went through, you know, researching this week, and you know, two very good quarterbacks, wide receiver, wide receiving core. I think one of the only things that I can really split is maybe the defensive line. You've got the two leading, uh, two joint leading um, in sacks this season in uh, Louis Barice. And also in, sorry if I just grabbed my That's notes. right, while you're doing that. Yeah. So it looks like the Stingrays have deferred and the Rhinos have elected to receive. So it'll be interesting, the Stingrays kicking off the Rhinos receiving means our offense is going to be going on the field right after special teams. So um, you, you were saying a little bit about offense versus defense. Yeah, Sam Holloway was the other name as well. Both with four sacks on the season, joint highest in the league. So I think that's one of the one of the only things that I can really split them with. And then... um. In the secondary, C, uh, CJ GM James, GM James had a really good uh, good week last week as well for the Rhinos. Uh, that was with uh, a defensive player of the week for Osgrand and Focus as well in the shutout versus Logan Bears cool. last week. So, so um, you had a chance to talk to the Rhinos coach before the game. Did he give you any insights while we're getting ready for the kickoff? What are the Rhinos really going to have to focus on or what are they going to key on for getting a win under their belt? Yeah, I spoke to uh, Coach Levi Sturgis, and he seemed really confident in the in the group's ability to shut down, you know, key pieces on this offense for the uh, for the for the Stingrays. I spoke to him about uh, Jaden O'Rourke, who is a freak athlete. I have down on my notes. He is absolutely insane. Six foot eight, two hundred and forty pounds at tight end, and he's nineteen. He's the same age as me, and is a foot taller. So, uh, bit of a behemoth there of of a footballer, and. Yeah, he is insane. He's already got a, a college offer from Austin Pay over in over in, in America. So congratulations to him and Levi Sturgis. Just focus on what we do. Just you know, keep uh, keep to keep to uh, our strengths and uh, just just play them to. Um, well, we're play about Jayden to rock to those to their strengths. Great, we're about to get underway. So it's um, live streaming from Brisbane, Australia. Saturday night football. We've got the Gold Coast Stingrays playing the Brisbane Rhinos. Ambient temperature right now is about 22 degrees. Uh, dew on the field will probably come shortly. The field has been nice, nice and crisply presented. You can see we're ready to go. And here we are, underway. It's a short kick. Oh, it's a surprise meant for the Rhinos, and it's recovered. So it's a short kick, as in an onside kick. It went the 10 yards. That's the required limit, and the Rhinos were caught on the back foot, and it's a Stingray's recovery. Did not see that one coming, Sam. Yes, yeah, open middle there just for the, uh, from the Rhinos. So, little lack of concentration off of the um, off of the kickoff, and now Taj Borden comes out. First year, first year senior was absolutely insane in rookies last year. So, I uh, um in juniors last year. Sorry. So, he's already having himself an absolutely incredible season. He's out there with now with uh, Venom McCallum on out to his right. Now, I did talk to Coach uh, Brewster from the Stingrays. He said that they were going to try doing things a little bit differently tonight because they knew the Rhinos were pretty strong on a whole bunch of different fronts. So there's a run up the middle, bouncing off of tackles, and it's a nice 11-yard pickup. Great run and great open field running. Should have been caught behind the field but uh, or behind the line, but the Rhinos' defense just trying to get into their settling in. There's a... Rolling off that tackle and then getting into some open field. One of the American imports in this league, Vernon McCalmont from Connecticut, uh, went to Norwich University. Um, that was in uh, in uh, West Virginia, so he brings some experience over from from the states. So shotgun formation. It looked like it was going to be an inside handoff. It's a pass going long and deep. We have an open receiver. Coverage was a little bit short on that one. And so we have a uh, receiver going out of bounds, which does stop the clock at about the 13-yard line. So clearly the Stingrays moving the ball with uh, a balance of run and passing offense. You'll see on this replay, fading out here to the right-hand side, near side of the field, giving instructions, finding the open player, and then just taking the ball out of bounds. Nice start with a couple of big plays for the Stingrays. R Rhinos are going to have to tighten up. 
sporting a uh, front line defense of three on the ground, linebackers pocketing in. There's the open run again and stopped right on the money, which is maybe a two-yard gain, but otherwise the Rhinos defense coming in quickly to collapse that play. So the Rhinos are going to have to really jump on this one because with a second and seven from about the currently on the 10-yard line, they can actually get a first down before they score a touchdown. Let's see what the Rhinos come up with. Wide receivers up to the top of the field on the left-hand side. Shotgun, here's the, it's a pass going into the corner and, oh, broken up by the Rhinos defender, but in fact the tipped pass is caught Two feet in and the Stingray score. Matt um, Major, second touchdown there for the year. That's his second reception already of the game. So he's strongly involved in this um, first offensive drive now. Tough one for the Rhinos because uh, the Rhinos defender got a hand on the ball, did the tip drill. Unfortunately, it came down into a Stingray's hand. So very close on um, getting two feet in before going out of bounds at the dead ball line. So uh, you can see the Stingrays look like they're lining up for a two-point conversion as opposed to kicking a field goal. So they're going to go for the points. Sam, do they have a track record with this, or is this just their style of changing it up? Well, I haven't been able to watch much film from the, from the Stingrays, but uh, the Rhinos do have a, a field goal unit, but I, I'm not too sure about the Stingrays, so... Yeah, they'll have to go for two points uh, on the large well, majority of their... It looks like we've got a, a player down, so the medics will come out on field. Uh, trusting it was just a solid hit. I don't think we're going to see much in the replay. It's there on the left-hand side of the line, and... Looks like somebody got landed on, so maybe, hopefully, just not the wind out. We don't have a number yet, but as soon as we do, we'll, um, we'll try to get a uh, medics report. So, might have been Lincoln Walker down there, I believe, number 71, interior defensive lineman. Right. Okay. Thanks for the pickup. So, while, uh, while the kicking uh, receiving unit will come back out on the field, looks like um, if it is Lincoln, he is at least moving. So, that's a good sign. And uh, most of the teams do get very respectful when we have an injured player on the field. So, it will just take us a little bit of time before we get started. Interesting opening drive that you picked up, Sam, and that is that we had uh, the opening running play and then passing plays that scored eventually got into the touchdown. And it looks like it is 71, so Lincoln's going to be able to get up under his own power. We'll find out. It looks like it might be just a leg or an ankle injury. He's up, but he's, uh, he's not going to be moving too well. So looks like he might be taking a timeout for a chunk of the game. So here we are early in the first quarter. The Stingrays, four plays, have gotten a touchdown drive, and that was all on the back of an onside kick. Um, I had it on good authority from Coach Brewster that they were going to be mixing it up. I did not think that it would start with an onside kick as the lead off to the game, but that was a very creative move and definitely caught the Rhinos off guard. And good spotting, Sam. It looks like it was Lincoln. He's off under his own power. Hopefully just shaken up on the play. And they've now filled that middle spot off, off of this kickoff formation. Uh, that was uh, Dean Latimahina, Latimahina in there for, for that fill spot. So should just be a routine kickoff now for the Stingrays. No surprises. So Rhinos and Stingrays, um, being that Southeast Queensland has a real rivalry, these two are probably at the heart of that. So here comes the kick. Solid kick going downfield, one bounce on the ground, picked up at the six yard line to the 15 to the 20, moving forward open field, and it's a loose ball scooped up by the Stingrays. Unless they call it down, it's going to be a touchdown. And we do not have any signals from the referees in the middle of the field. So it looks like a loose ball scored the touchdown. So 
We might be able to pick something up on the replay, Sam, because that is not what the Rhinos wanted to start the game. The, clearly, the Stingrays have got something going here. So kickoff was a line drive, picked up cleanly at the 15-5-yard line, coming back. Ball control is any coach's nightmare, and it looks like it was stripped before he hit the ground, scooped up, and run in for a clean touchdown. So... I'd love to credit the scooper. That's a very hard thing to do, especially at, you know, f you know, pretty much full pace. So that's very, uh, yeah. very impressive there. That was uh, Jordan Uppy. He's a defensive back on the special teams unit. So now they can go for two and get a very, very early lead going into this game. About halfway through this first quarter. They caught the special teams off guard. So um, they, get the, that they get the group in the lineup and... Inside handoff, and it's a walk into the touch, touchdown. So the two-point conversion is uh, is good. So the Stingrays, in less than a couple of minutes on our game, have really taken a very heavy toll on the Rhinos with, first of all, the onside kick that went in for a uh, short drive and a touchdown. And now on their kickoff, stripping the ball away from the Rhinos' returner and then carrying it in for a touchdown and the two-point conversion puts the Stingrays 14-0. And that's got to be a little bit of a uh, rattling cage for the Rhinos. That's not the way they wanted to start this game. be interesting to see what um, what scheme they bring out here now. Will they be, uh, be aggressive on the, when uh, Mitch Bradford takes his offense out there? Will they be a little bit more conservative and just try to ease their way back into the game? I I've think that they need to get a few big yardage plays just to... Tell the Stingrays, you know, you've got a lead now, but we're still here. It will be interesting how they respond, there, and that is that's going to be the fifty-dollar question. Uh, you may have seen in the in the replay, Coach Brewster was rushing down the field, cheering his players on, and there's a nice open field run. So that was a kickoff return of about twenty-five yards. Nice work by, by the Raven. Uh, sorry, by the Rhinos to get the ball back in gear and to pick up some yardage and get the ball in a good spot. So it's at about the 38-yard line for the Rhinos. Now let's see what Mitch can do in terms of putting putting the Rhinos, just basically find the rhythm and, and get the get a good drive going. As you said, let's show the Stingrays that, uh, that they're back in the game. Now, um, Sam, from what you can tell, Mitch likes the shotgun position, doesn't he? Yeah, he's very confident back there. And one thing that he definitely has in his arsenal is he likes to run as well. Ooh, he likes to run as well. He's he's not scared to go up through a gap in the in offensive line and pick up some pick up some yardage. You know, yep. ten yard gains um, here and there. And you know, coming back from a foot injury, you know that that takes confidence. So credit to Mitch where credit's due. So let's see what. What he's forced to do here, will, will he have time in the pocket up against two of the best sack, uh, uh, sack leaders in the league? Um, but the Rhinos have also only allowed nine sacks this season, which is the se uh, joint second lowest in, um, in the league. So it'll be interesting to see how this uh, battle goes in the trenches tonight. So that pass sailed a little bit out of Mitch's hands, so it's now second and ten. Oh, tough on the snap, so Mitch is going to have to turn this into something. But he's got the open field. He's got some blocking up the front. He takes the ball down to about the 40-yard line on the Brewster side. However, there is a flag on the play back in the midsection, which usually indicates a holding. And the flag came out early, which means most likely going to be against the Rhinos. We'll wait for the referee's call. But you can see the players walking back. So tough one for the Rhinos in terms of getting a holding call on such a great run by Mitch. Mitch turns what is otherwise a clear loss with the with the defense coming after him. I believe that's Jack Burberry in there uh, filling in at uh, left guard. They've got a few injuries, the Rhinos, um, just all around the field. So it'll be interesting to see what adjustments Levi Sturgis has to make. Okay, so Mitch thought he was going to pass, but he's actually tucked the ball down. And he's, uh, he's tried to get a run back into the game. However, cut down as he, as he gets out of the pass rush and the attack tackled in the secondary. It will unfortunately be third down and about 15 to go. So 
Mitch has got his work cut out for him. We've got three, three wide receivers on the inside here, slot receiver and wide receiver in the top side. Nobody in the backfield, so we know it's going to be a pass play. Mitch steps in, and there's the pass, and unfortunately, it's an interception. Lots of running room, and it's going to be nothing but Mitch, and it's going to be a flag on the play. And uh, Stingrays run out of bounds at about the 8-yard line, but the flag down at about the 21. So uh, it'll, be, it'll be after the interception has occurred. So Mitch was under pressure, basically on his back foot, didn't get as much onto this one, and he came up short. Stingrays took the pick. Going in, and Mitch is fortunate to get the tackle, but we're going to see what the referee says before they mark it off. Christian Denton there on the interception, steps, um, step in front of the receiver there. Got him down as a defensive back standout for the Rays. Two interceptions make that three now. Uh, three tackles for loss and um, nine tackles on the season. Right. Uh, for the defensive back, so he's definitely a standout for them um, on that defense. So the turnover stands with the interception. Unfortunately, the run back is negated due to a 15-yard penalty. Uh, missed the call, but it was otherwise a serious enough one that the referee gave it a 15-yard walk-off. So the Stingrays will pick up the ball, and unfortunately the Rhinos are already back on defense. It's uh, basically first and 10 from the 31-yard line. Hey, we've got a lot of uh, international people sitting in on this game, uh, Sam. I just wanted to give a quick shout-out while we watch this, the Stingrays get started again. And a great outside run, taking the ball out of bounds. Our, um, our international cohort coming in from California, so I'd like to say hi to Super Slider Dirt Devil Ava, uh, the Philipsons, the Nelsons, the Volmers, people from around the world that are going to be watching this game cheering on both the Stingrays and the Rhinos. And right now, the Stingrays, you can see from that bounce-out run, picking up the yardage that they wanted, almost grabbing the first down. So, Sam, what do you reckon the Rhinos need to do now on defense? Because they're staying with that three-front line. They're looking for the pass. Stingrays are strong in both, both, uh, both offensive uh plays, you know, running and passing. They go for another run here, and that's a good stop there by the Rhinos. That'll give them some confidence in the uh, yep. couple yards gain, but just short of the first down, maybe. Yep, the uh, inside handoff, and the uh, line judge on the far side is marking it as short of the first down, so it'll be short and a little bit of yardage, but they, yeah, they try to go up the middle with three down linemen, but you see the linebackers crashing in fairly quickly to um, stop the play. I haven't really seen Jaden O'Rourke yet. He's lining up um, out wide quite consistently throughout this game so far. That's Coach Gordon said during the week that he loves to go to him on third and fourth down. So That's 80, 84 on the far side is Jaden. Bit hard to miss him. Six foot eight. Yeah. So, oh, it's an inside handoff, and that will unfortunately stop forward progress is still a two-yard gain. So that will be whistled forward, move the chains, uh, both sideline refs and the back judge say it is a first down. So first and 10 from the 20-yard from the line. And the um, Stingrays are showing a little bit of discipline now on just moving the ball and controlling the ball, which is what any offensive team wants to be able to do, not just score quickly. Uh, but they've got a nice cushion with a 14-0 with a lead. Stepping back for the pass and running up the middle, but locked up. Nice big arm tackle. Huge big arm tackle by um, one of Rhino's best. Jack Lowe there on the tackle. Running back rotation now for the Stingrays. Um, in comes James Taylor, who makes up part of the... Um, Second highest rushing yards um, in uh, Gridiron Queensland, 452 for the Stingrays. So good rotation there with the American and now James Taylor coming in. So we'll see what the, uh, see what the Stingrays do. And it is a shotgun pass. Here's the long ball going wide off the fingertips. 
and unfortunately that had touchdown written all over it. <laughs> so um, always tough when a pass receiver sees the ball and then gets into the fingertips but then slips. It was a beautifully thrown pass over the shoulder. Only person that can get that is the Stingray, Stingray receiver. So we're now looking at second and nine, and we'll see what the Stingrays can come up with because that showed that the secondary had missed some coverage, um, which was a weak spot when the uh, Rhinos last played the Ravens. Their uh, secondary had a little bit of work to do, and um, it'll, it'll be a test now because, as you said earlier, Sam, the Stingrays have got a pretty potent passing offense. That was Matt Major going in for his second touchdown, unfortunate with the drop now. Looking his way again. Pass protection was breaking down pretty quickly, so that ball had a little bit, a little bit extra on it. So that ball being high and away means that the uh, the downs will now be at fourth down and nine yards to go, sitting on the 19-yard line. Interesting uh, what the what the Ravens will uh, sorry what the Stingrays will do because fourth and long normally there would be a field goal attempt, but this is not something that the Stingrays are going to go for. They're going to go for fourth and nine. Let's see if it's going to pay off for them. Shotgun approach. There's a long ball and a wide open receiver. And again, uh, the Raven, uh, sorry, the Rhinos defense struggling with that pass coverage. Um, so who, who did we get on the touchdown, Sam? It's Braden Field. I've got his family sitting right next to me up here in the commentary box. They seem very happy about that one. That's a brilliant, that's brilliant when the family support is there to cheer him on. It was a solid pass straight to him and no coverage. So good eyes on the uh, Stingrays quarterback to be able to pick that one up. Stingrays quarterback being Taj Borden and Taj being one of the younger quarterbacks in the league at 19 years old, but as Coach Brewster told me, Taj has been with the club for five or six years and is well and truly knowing and all seeing in the offensive scheme of things. Um, so with the extra point conversion or the attempt is no good, the Stingrays runner stopped just short of the goal line. So it will be a six-point pickup which uh, puts us at 20 to nothing. Three touchdowns by the Stingrays is not what we were expecting to see in the first quarter. Just another note on Taj Borden. He, he is a very good player. He's, he was part of the Legacy Football College uh, camp tour over in, um, over in America earlier this year. He has definitely got a very bright future in this game, despite you know, the height, of, uh, height disadvantage, you know, Seeing players like uh, Kyler Murray and Russell Wilson, you know, starting to come into the into the NFL now, so you know he he might have a, a strong future. Hopefully, his height doesn't hold him back, but he is definitely a great player in in the aspects he needs to be great at. So, line drive kickoff picked up at the ten yard line, moving forward. Special teams creating a little bit of an alley, so we had a twenty yard run back, and a nice job there by. Um, on the Rhinos uh, returns team, getting it out to the 30-yard line. So it will now be a challenge. The Rhinos, even though they're down 20 nothing, I'd be willing to suspect that they are going to be looking for just get some rhythm, get a, get a drive going. Mitch is in the shotgun with the tailback. That's the pitch option. Solid. Solid contact. That's Riley Wood coming around the corner, basically taking on a guy that was size and a half bigger than him, saying, not today. I, wa I want to have a piece of this. So runs over a man, picks up an extra two yards. That was amazing to watch. The Rhino sideline, every one of them screamed. And rightfully so, that was amazing to watch. That is why we love football and cannot wait to see some more plays like that hopefully tonight. So uh, that was Riley Wood taking the ball and basically saying, I want a piece of this. This is Mitch coming in on the near side. 
just stepping out of bounds off after a nice 15 yard gain, 16 yard gain. So the chains move forward. It's now going to be first and 10 from the 45 or what we now know as midfield. So as we've said before, because the teams are playing on a rugby union field and they have to allow for the end zone, it's a 45 yard halfway marker. And so that's where we are at the 45 yard marker. First and 10, Rhinos on the move and looking to just keep the drive going. Mitch at uh, quarterback, stepping back in. He'll step into the pocket. No, he's gonna roll out to the right. He's rolling right. He's now gonna take it on himself to pick up some yards. And basically runs past one of the Stingray defenders saying, I'm not gonna slide. So Mitch is, as you said earlier, Sam, willing to take the run because he's now got faith that he can pick up the yardage. He's got good instincts for it as well. Bring him all of Fipo went down um, uh, in his blocking assignment on the on the play previous to that one and instantly uh, took, the, uh, took the opportunity to run out to that left side and he did the same there on the rollout. So definitely not afraid to run and coming off that foot injury, as I said, that takes a lot of confidence. So good to see that from Mitch. So stepping in and he's just gotten the ball away. Uh, he did not see the uh, defender coming up on his blind side. He got hit as he let go of the ball. So points to Mitch for getting the ball away. Uh, fortunately, it just fell a little bit short. <clears throat> Mitch got hit well, and he's been under pressure quite a few times in this first half. And um, so he gets the play call in from Coach Levi, and he'll be um, setting up now for second and ten. Rhinos go for a quick reset. Wide receivers three on the ins three on the left side of the field here, so you'd think something is up. Let's see what Mitch comes up with. Quick pass over the middle, caught and retrieved, and down at the 18-yard line. So that's either yep. It looks like the referees are marking that as a first down. So nice pass over the middle, big stretch for uh, the Rhinos tight end to take that ball. Falling forward for the first down. It's Max Williams, uh, leading receiver for the Rhinos this season. Um, he's taking a lot of the, a lot of the, uh, the stress off of Mitch Bradford, who is now missing um, Calder Shanks, who went over to Dickinson College in America. Uh, Max Williams up to that's now 15th reception of the year, um, 254 yards previous to that reception. And in comes Carlos Matos. Um, you can see him out um, in the backfield. Portuguese import made his debut last week. Bradford on the pass. Nice one, and he's down at about the five-yard line. So Mitch drills it to the five-yard line. He didn't leave that one to chance because his receiver did the job of finding the seam. When we say seam, he's basically looking for that little gap between what is a linebacker coverage and what is a defensive back cover. And so we now have the Rhinos marching the ball down the field. Now they're getting their rhythm. First and goal from about the five-yard line. Nice one, and it is a Mitch Bradford touchdown pass. Beautiful shot to, is it Sinan? Um, no, that was Riley Woods there. Oh, um, was it Riley? Reception, okay. Uh, for Riley Woods. He's had a couple of um, receiving touchdowns. I might. I think that actually is his second receiving touchdown for the year. He's a good weapon out of the backfield, which is seeming to become a bit of a, a, bit of a trend now um, over in, in the NFL and college. So it's a big strength for running backs to be able to get out of the backfield and... Um, Receive um, against the Logan Bears last week. He was uh, uh, being swung out out to the out to the side as an option for um, Mitch Bradford. So he's he's a weapon um, in both receiving and rushing. That's a great and that's a great outlet. So the Rhinos kick and it is good. So it is seven points on the board for the Rhinos. The Rhinos seven, Stingrays twenty. However, that was a solid drive for the Rhinos marching down the field. They did get one penalty to give him a help. But otherwise, I think Mitch, Mitch Bradford gets points for keeping that drive alive with his slanting run to both the left and the right, looking for the open field as the pocket collapsed. And I like how they went back to the pass. Um, Gold Coast are ranked third in the, in the league in passing defense, but they're ranked first in rushing defense. Um, only only um, first ahead of Brisbane just. But it's good to see that they adjusted back to the pass, knowing that... Um, that they can give up yards oh, quite easy. Uh, the Gold Coast Stingrays, 644 on the year. So that's a good adjustment. Uh, Mitch Bradford took control of that drive and um, 
that's why I think he's uh, definitely the best quarterback in the league. Maybe not statistically, but in terms of who he is for the Rhinos' offense. And um, that's what I was saying when they played the Ravens about a month ago. They need to put together one of those drives that just efficient uh, downfield movement, and that's exactly what they did there. And, and that's what happens when you can make it work. Tom Fenwick now on the kickoff. So Rhinos lining up. And he has a ma massive foot, so that ball goes sailing into the end zone for a touchback. And um, as you've heard us explain, in gridiron football, when the ball goes into the end zone, that just counts as a touchback. So the ball is counted as dead. It comes out to the 20-yard line. And we will restart with the Stingrays on offense. Now, this is going to be the first time the Stingrays have started from a kickoff in their end of the field. Sam, do you think they're going to go back to what they do best, which is a rushing game, or they're going to play 50-50? Uh, I'd like to see them go to Jaden O'Rourke, but Vernon McCalmon has had a really good game out of the backfield so far. I'd like to see him have a couple touches now, but just Jaden O'Rourke over the top of uh, top of defensive backs is an entertaining thing to watch on, on film. So looking forward to seeing if he gets a few touches tonight. He's going out right now wide. So Jaden O'Rourke, number 84, coming to the near side of the field. Um, clearly one of the top flights for our the Stingrays team because at six foot eight he's an easy target. Taj takes the hits an inside handoff and an open field gallop. Oh my goodness. Ankle tackle at the at midfield saves what would have been a touchdown run. So it's an inside handoff lane created just by some good clean blocking up the front and a great open field run. Vernon McCallum on um, 20 touches um, in their last game against the Raptors. That was um, two weeks ago by last week for the, um, for the Stingrays. And he's definitely leading the rushing offense now for the, uh, for the Rays. So it's really good to see him get, um, get good production and definitely be a big vocal point on this, um, on this offense. Yeah, when the Rhinos have that three-man up line and then they rely on their D-line, or sorry, the uh, linebackers to clean up, that does put some pressure on them. And if McCallum at 22 here, we get a, there, now the Rhinos have found a little bit of rhythm there. Stopping James Taylor at, with about a four yard pickup. And uh, making, obviously making some adjustments because if, uh, if they can't stop um, Vernon on those slanting runs, Vernon's gonna have a pretty big day. So Vernon McCall McCallum at number 22 Looks like he's getting a bit of a re breather. And so we'll see the Stingrays lining up at about the 39-yard line. Man in motion coming across. Taj is there, takes the snap. He's lining up for a big pass, open field, and just outside the stretch. It was a great shot towards Matthew Major. Unfortunately, not completed, and we do have a penalty flag on the field. Usually at the line of scrimmage that you indicates and the initial indication is holding against the stingrays, which will be which will be walked off offensive holding. So offensive holding against number seventy one on the stingrays. So not only was it an incomplete pass, it was also back and bump by ten yards. So it's now now it's a long down with second and 16. Second and almost, yeah, second and 16. So Taj will line up in the shotgun position. Wide receivers are ready to go. Let's see what he comes up with. It's the inside handoff again. Open field running. And it was a great breakthrough by James Taylor. Picked up almost the entire yardage for the first down. Came up just a couple short. So, um... Great run up the middle, splitting the defenders and the uh, defensive backs struggling to get some containment on that run game. Gives me a bit of a Mike Allstop vibe for any, um, you know, high level uh, watches uh, watching the stream at the moment. You know, bigger back, but, you know, ha still has agility. Now Vernon McCalmon in. See how he goes. Yep. So... Taj is there. He fakes the inside handoff. It was a run action, and he's now going to get... He gets tackled by a crew of rhinos. Anytime you see a quarterback taking an open field run, you definitely hold your breath a little bit if you're the coach, and the rhinos collapse him 
with uh, fourth and two. Well, Taj isn't afraid to run either, similar to Mitch Bradford. He's fourth in uh, league rushing this year, 155 yards now, adding to that with around uh, about an extra maybe 10 there. So, yeah, he's definitely not afraid to run. It gives me a um, bit of a Kyler Murray type of vibe. You sure. Know, he's shorter quarterback, still great arm, but, you know, just as effective in the running game. So, Okay, so ladies and gentlemen who are watching, that wraps, wraps up the first quarter of the Stingrays versus the Ravens. Here's how the scoring went. Stingrays got on the board after an onside kick that basically gave them possession of the football and a quick scoring drive. That put them in the lead at 6 nothing. Then they scored again off of, uh, off of a couple of interesting plays and then scored a third time, but the Rhinos have come back with a score of their own. Currently, we're sitting at the Rhinos 7, Stingrays 20. End of the first quarter, which means the players, the game switches... Uh, team switch sides of the field and we just continue on so you notice the referees have to quickly figure out how do we reverse the ball but otherwise the players switch sides and we got the stingrays lining up at about the 35 yard line setting up for a fourth down and one so we have McCalmut in the backfield which means you can sort of guess that he's going to plow forward but then it might be Who's my favorite tight end? Nope, it is. Oh, my goodness. And it looks like the Rhinos have stopped Taj. The play broke down quickly. Pass coverage was good. And now a question is what the referees have scored it as a loss of downs. So Taj is sure that he's got the first down, but the referees have marked the ball and said no. So, Rhinos take over on downs. That was a hell of a stop. That was very interesting to watch. I saw GM Janes come down from the secondary to go into a bit of a nickel rover type of position. I think they sensed the run. There was, um, I couldn't see who the number was, but there was a linebacker in there who, who signaled to a defensive lineman, hey, maybe something, um, something is happening here with a, a run play. And, and they read it perfectly. Um, turnover on downs now for the Rhinos and offense coming out to maybe get some points on the board, get them back into this game. Yeah, and odd that they use Vernon McCalmut as a bit of a decoy because he wasn't getting the ball. It was just, it was basically Taj going the whole thing. Looking like a blitz. And in fact, Mitch is under pressure, so he's going to get rid of the ball. So when we say getting rid of the ball, Mitch, uh, sorry, Sam, wh what's the goal here? Because Mitch clearly was not passing to anybody directly. Yeah, it was, you know, <laughs> far behind the line of scrimmage there, so... You know, it's it's a lot better than taking you know a five, six, you know, even even ten yard loss, which does happen over over in America. So, yeah, the smart play by the quarterback, that's experience coming through there. Just get gets through the ball, brings them second down, and they can reset now. So the logic is that as long as he gets it close to a receiver, they will not call that an intentionally throwing it away. But it was pretty clear he also didn't want to get caught behind the line of scrimmage. So shotgun under pressure, it's a screen pass with some open field running. And it looks like the Rhinos are going to push that loose ball. It really depends on how the... It depends. It looks like the referee is calling it as a Stingray's recovery. So Stingray's pretty powerful at stripping the ball. So before he gets down, the ball is stripped out of his arm. So I have a strong suspicion Coach Levi will be practicing ball protection. Mm, yeah, that's... Next week. That's, that's twice that's, now. That was... Uh, Two Max fumbles, Williams, yep. And two then, um, fumbles that have been turnovers, and um, and then also uh, Max Slatter on the um on the re um return earlier in the game in the first quarter. So that's twice now that they've lost the ball on um on runbacks. So it's unfortunate the for the Rhinos. First fumble recovery turned into points for the Stingray, so it'll be interesting. Good to see if the defense can rise to this occasion and uh, and shut the uh, shut the Rhino, uh Sorry, shut the Stingrays down. So Stingray's picking it up, first and 10 at the 41-yard line. And it's a running play, and now the Rhinos, Rhinos spotted that one, and they were geared up for it. So just as McCall might, might have thought he was going to break free, no, there's three or four Rhinos pulling him up and saying not today. So one-yard gain, which is... Uh, which is a small one for McKelmet, and the Stingrays will be at second and nine.
trying to get some rhythm going, trying to get a drive started. And uh, for right now, it will be wide receivers, top and bottom of your screen, one in the backfield. Taj is getting ready for the snap. He's got the hard count. He fakes the handoff, and he's drawn up, and he's going to be, he's got an open man, and he's down the field. Five, 10, it's a touchdown pass. And you see the coach Brewster on the far side of the field going extremely excited, running with his player down the field as the secondary breaks down on coverage and Taj spots, spots his receiver. Good for six points. Great pocket awareness there by, uh, by Taj Borden. Um, felt the defense coming up behind him, dodged that man, gets out to his right, sees the receiver downfield, extends the play, and... Um, Makes a touchdown happen. Great route by Matt Major, and then uh, finding space to extend the play um, on his own as well. So, Yeah, he did slip behind the coverage, and unfortunately because when Taj looks like he's running, people have to make adjustments, but that leaves one man-to-man -man coverage, and um, that's not going to go well. So Taj now straight up the middle, and McCalmet is in. McCalmet is in for the two-point conversion. So the Stingrays are showing some strength here in the opening half with um, another score and a conversion that puts us at 26 to 7. Certainly not out of reach, but not exactly what the first half, the, not the kind of first half the Rhinos were looking for. And Matt Major out on the far sideline screaming his, his head off there. He was very excited. Two touchdowns tonight. He's... Uh, Touchdown leader in this game, and yeah, he deserves to be excited. He's had a very good night tonight. And I think that makes it the second touchdown pass for Taj as well, right? Uh, I believe so, yes. Uh, yeah, that's two touchdown passes now for Taj Borden. So special teams setting up, and now, of course, the Rhinos are prepared for anything. Leaving 10 yards open, and here comes the kickoff. A squib kick that will go into the end zone. So a um, little bit of a uh, little bit of pressure and a little bit of uh, hand work here in the middle of the section. So clearly tempers are already starting to flare a little bit, and the Rhinos need to settle down and put together another one of those drives. Now, Mitch doesn't have any problems running a drive. Uh, right now, it's a question of finding the defensive balance because the defense is start, starting to um, show some signs of some gaps that Taj has been able to make use of, both as a runner as well as um, as a passing attack goes. Yeah. So, Rhino's here, first and 10 from about the 20-yard line. And uh, we'll, see, we'll see what Mitch can put together from the shotgun. Nobody in the backfield. Open pass. And he takes a big hit. Big, big hit. But holds on to the ball. It's one of the hardest things to do as a receiver is get, turn your back to the defense knowing that you're going to have a man coming downfield to attack you in the back and so still uh, hang on to the football. So great play there. Tom Fenwick, number yeah, 14. Yeah, I was going to say. Tom Fenwick knows how to hold on to the ball because he bobbled it for the split second before he caught it. But as he caught it, he was absolutely drilled. Uh, one of the great NFL uh, commentators in the past, uh, also ex-coach John Madden, used to say that was a decleater. He got, he got hit hard. Showing, oh my goodness. So uh, the Stingrays were showing uh, blitz and then they held up for just a second, but unfortunately... Rhino's receiver on his cut um, slipped and fell, so pass sailed away. So Rhino's struggling to get something started here. It's now going to be third down and 10 to go. I'd like to see a few outside zone runs here for Riley Woods. Maybe not now. If they get a, uh, a conversion to bring up first down on this play, then give him a couple touches. He was... He was great for them last week, back to his best, um, over 100 rushing yards against that. Uh, Here he comes. He's got some open field in the middle. There he goes, taking it out and running past it. He has split the defense. Oh, my goodness, that's Riley Wood sailing 80 yards. 
right up the middle, just what you were calling for, Sam. Okay, Levi uh, Sturgis is one step ahead of me, and that is why he has the head coaching job and not myself. Riley Woods is electric. I, I've watched him on film a few times now. So and a lot of screaming down on the sideline. They were very Riley, hyped up about that So uh, Riley Woods, number one, coming back in and getting some thank yous from the team because that puts the Rhinos with a little bit of a little bit of wind in their sails. And we're talking special teams. They're getting so excited they forgot to set up for the point after attempt. Coach's nightmare. Um, so special teams trying to get their trying to get their sorting back in together. But on that run from Riley Woods, he sp uh, he splits the middle. Well, they the, they split the middle, but then he takes off like a rocket. He, he's insane. I, I've watched him on film a few times, and he looks like a road runner. And whether he and the kick know, takes it as a kick is up. In, sorry, didn't break in, Sam. Kick is up and good, so that puts the Rhinos at 14 points to 26. And um, at the risk of sounding like an optimist, we have a ball game. And not uh, and. To, to Riley uh, Woods' credit, he is, he, he's the Rhinos Roadrunner, the Triple R. He has, um, he's got over three, uh, now up over 400 yards on the season um, off of, you know, around about 40 attempts now. So he, he's now um, outright first in those, cat in, in, um, in attempts and in, um, in yards now, only uh, second behind Ben Curley from the Ravens now in touchdowns. But, you know, a run, up, run like that um, tonight, you know, he's got a, got a chance now to go ahead of Ben Curley, be the best running back in this league. And, you know, in all categories, um, you know, he, you know, just as a player, he's definitely, um, I, I, I'd say, the best running back in this league. Rugby league background, bringing it, uh, bringing it to, to the gridiron field and definitely showing his, uh, his ability. Clearly able to also shed tackles because once he got through the line, he had to get through the secondary and at one point just sprinted through a couple of defenders who tried to give him a one-arm special. So here comes the kickoff from the Rhinos. It's a high ball, which gives lots of hang time. They're setting up for return from the 15-yard line to the 20, to the 25, to the 30, to the 35, 40, 45, 50, one man to beat, and he's pushed out of bounds. So uh, we'll have to see where the ref scores it. Scores it at the 30-yard line into Rhinos territory. So fantastic run back, um, as we saw going down the sidelines, just running out of field. Now we saw the, the Stingrays were setting up for that, which is they want to create an alley or a lane, give their runner a shot to get to that sideline, and that definitely worked. That was a, almost a 55, 60-yard run back. So... Ends up being a 40-yard run back, so special teams for the Stingrays, putting them in striking position. So uh, whereas we thought this might be a defensive game, it looks like it's going to show up being a scoring game. We'll see what the uh, Rhinos can do for defense and if they made some adjustments to see if they can close down Taj. So he's setting up in the pocket. There's the long ball down the middle. Sails over the head, so a little bit too much heat underneath that one. They've changed the the man who was on Har um, on Jaden O'Rourke now. They've um, switched to Harrison Roden off of um, of a rookie Sawa Bembi. So interesting to see if they look his way now. He hasn't been in this game. I, I don't know if he's had a target so far, but no, he hasn't actually. Um, and even the one over the middle that sailed wide early or sailed high earlier, he wasn't the target. So he's been a bit of a sleeper so far in the game. Maybe he's going to be their strike weapon. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> well, he definitely is. Has been so far this season. So. Taj might look to him here, second down, second and ten. So they've been li lining up out wide, you know, as a tight end. That's definitely not how that how you usually get lined up. So definitely a wide receiver, listed as a tight end. but So run up the middle, uh, shedding blocks, but essentially being stopped with a five-yard gain. So Stingray's continually testing that center of the Rhinos defense. Rhino's only putting three men, three down men on the field, which means they got they are relying on their linebackers to really close out any running game. Um, so they work on containment. You can see it's three men in the front and then five linebackers and defensive backs who are now swapping sides to cover to cover the passing package. So we'll be back on uh, Jaden and Rourke now. So it looks like it's an open pass and incomplete. 
Taj getting chased down and did not see the defender who landed on him and used him as a cushion. However, he did get the pass away, passing complete. So that leaves us at fourth and five from the 25-yard line. Ooh, tough call for the Stingrays. They're too far away. They don't have a kicker, and they're too close to do a punt. Now this is where you look for Jaden O'Rourke. Put him into the slot, get him on a small seam route, and then Taj just air it up. You don't need to put it on his chest. You can put it up above. There's no defensive backs. Maybe Cham Jaynes. Good jump here. He's the only. He's the tallest uh, player on this um, on so this runner's defense. I can we're looking. Think of. We're looking. 84, the wide receiver on the near side, but he's coming down. Taj is getting caught in the pocket. Oh, and we've missed the tackle. So Taj is going to be lining up. He's not going to, but he will get the first down. So. Um, what a crazy play. Taj avoiding the tackle, which would have been a sack deep in the pole. He's looking for a receiver, so coverage is good. He eventually scrambles his way just past the first down line. So it's first and 10 on the back of Taj, really scraping together a bit of a, a, bit of a special play. How does someone do that? That was insane to watch. Taj Borden, incredible awareness, moves around. I think yeah. he evaded maybe two sack, sack attempts there, and he still gets out of it. That is an insane play by Taj Borden, picks up the first down. Didn't need to go to Jane and O'Rourke, just give it to the, just put it on the feet of Taj Borden. So credit to the Rhinos defense, their secondary had all passing lanes covered. Let's see what the Stingrays come up with, first and 10 from the 20 yard line, and uh, what the Rhinos do. So inside handoff, slight opening, but closed down quickly. So that Rhinos defense really adjusts very rapidly to that run game and uh, takes, takes down the run with a gain of about four, three yards. So second and seven from about the 13 yard line, sorry, from about the 16 yard line. Interesting to see what the Stingrays come up with, but the Rhinos package is gonna stay with three down linemen and then the secondary. Spread wide on the receivers. Let's see what Taj comes up with now. Defense is going to be in a one-on-one -on -one position. He's airing it out. Long ball and tip drill and the pickoff. So it is a Rhinos interception and a great tip drill exercise. What defenders always practice. There's the tip and picked up. And really all he had to do was put a knee down, but he gets back into the field to play. So whereas if he just put a knee down, it would have been first and 10 from the 20. Yeah. It's unfortunate. You hungry know, I, hungry you, to get some yards. You watch that and you go, just go down in the end zone. But I'd love to credit Sal Wabemi there. He's a friend from high school and he is a, he's a competitor. He, he loves loves competing, loves loves the energy. Loves, he's a very enthusiastic footballer and you know, get, got the tip onto the interception there and that is a great play on an on experienced wide receiver out there. And that was Matt Major, I believe, out on that far sideline. So the Rhinos uh, secondary comes to a great play which is going to hopefully give the Rhino something to cheer about, although being deep in your own end zone is always a little bit worrisome. So the Rhinos are going to have to get some yardage quickly. So there's the inside handoff. Who's our friend who is just basically going to take, take the ball for a scamper out to about the 22-yard line? It's Portuguese man Carlos Madison there taking um, some of the load off Riley Woods, who has been the main rusher for the Rhinos this year. Doing Great, great experience, nine years over in Portugal in the in their league over there, and he's come over here with um with a bit, lot of fire, hoping hoping the Rhinos can uh, well, feed him the football. That makes a that makes a great tag team in the backfield for for Mitch uh, to have those options because once the defense is split, those two can really turn it on. So here we go, another handoff up the middle, and uh, the Stingrays were ready for that one. So that turns out to be a loss after picking up a big first down. We're going to back it up by about five yards. Unfortunately for the Rhinos, that did not go well. So Coach Levi says that they are a running team, and that's something that Coach Brewster from the Stingrays com confirmed. He said, we know the Rhinos prefer to run. It'll be interesting to see what they do now with second and 14. And we got four wide receivers to our near side or to the right side of the field. It's an interesting formation. I, I can't recall seeing four wide receivers in a set um, before, so interesting there. And it is setting up, 
setting up Mitch to tuck the ball and take it forward. So he picks up about seven yards. Still not quite as much as, oh, it looked like they were setting up for a screen play. So Riley Wood, if you saw, he was lined up on the slot and he took three steps backwards like he was getting ready for a screen, which case it would have been a yeah. nice outside open field run for Riley. However, Mitch has to tuck the ball down because the coverage was good. So the Stingrays have gone to a three down lineman but they're showing blitz, and here comes the blitz. Mitch is going to have to move or get rid of the ball, and he's going to take the ball and run with it. And he makes, he makes the first down on his own. So uh, what is that you said about Mitch, Sam? You said he's happy to run the ball. He's happy to run the ball, and that was a smart competitive play, diving for the first down over the, over the, uh, over the marker there. So you set a downs here for the Rhinos. And timeout called, I believe, by the Rhinos as well. Yep. So uh, with a short timeout, basically, uh, each team gets a bit of a breather. 30 seconds goes on the clock, um, which is standard as in the NFL. Each team has two timeouts per half. And uh, we're looking forward to, um, to seeing what the Rhinos can do because we're running down. We're not a lot of time left in the second half, um, although it's, uh, it's tough to tell. As we've said before, we don't have an official clock because the refs, we're not connected directly with the refs. So what we give you as the game clock is our indication of what time is left in the half. So we are deep in the second quarter. And unfortunately, the uh, Stingrays have found a way to score again. So we're sitting at 14 to 26. And we'd love to see the Rhinos uh, put a bit of a drive together. Yeah, th this is... um. Two-minute offense territory now for the Rhinos. I think the timeout was called there by Levi Sturgis, getting them in the getting in the mindset. Hey, let's um, uh, put some good plays together, get the ball down the field, maybe go for three if we can get in field goal range. Tom Fenwick, uh, AFL background, um, has a good boot on him, but um, obviously the main goal here would be a touchdown. So, looking at a trips right formation here again from the Rhinos. So it's uh, it's aggressive and the Stingrays going to. Five looks down. like cover two. Oh, my goodness. They got everybody on the line, so they're going to come hard, and it looks like Mitch is getting ready for that. Free he play. gets oh. Mitch gets the hard count. So when we say a hard count, you heard Mitch bark the, uh, bark the call, and it was just enough of a pause. It looks like he drew the Stingrays offside. We'll wait for the official call whether a rhino moved. Yeah, so, that was uh, Kane Mackin biting and it in, is, in on that. They're showing encroachment or offsides by the defense. Captain just checking on that, so offside by the Stingrays. And that will be a five-yard gain, which puts them in first down territory. So uh, one, of, one of the things we know about uh, quarterbacks when they make those barking calls, even though it was a fourth down, they're definitely intending to um, basically jar the defense, and the defense took the bait, and that gives them the first down. Levi Sturgis staying aggressive here, staying in the trips right formation. Max Schlatter in the slot. Stingray showing blitz with their linebackers right on the line, and... Riley is up and through, and he's, he's gotten off of one defender. He's still going strong down to about the 25-yard line. So a great pickup and a great run from Riley. Skipping past, you really can't one-arm tackle that guy. And all the way down to the 25-yard line, you can see the Rhinos going into a quick offensive set. So you're right. Uh, Coach Levi Sturgis has basically set the two-minute game plan in motion. The Rhinos want to put some points on the board. Screaming trips right again at that um, out of those five, uh, three right, uh, three right receivers. Showing blitz, but not blitz. Out running, and he pockets that one. Oh my goodness! Mitch puts the ball in the hands of the receiver. The only place it could have been. Absolutely spectacular pass. Watch this as Mitch drops back. He knows where he's going. And we have outrunning the defender and just lays it in. 
So Tom Fenwick comes away with another with a touchdown pass. Mitch gets his second of the night. And that's that Tom Fenwick's third touchdown for the season. They've been spreading the spreading the offensive load around um, for the Rhinos. That's a, that's a and that's a that's probably a great offensive weapon. Yeah, to uh, spread. Tom Fenwick is is a very good weapon. Uh, he's got a, um, a, a good catch to yards, um, good catch to yards ratio, and now that's his third touchdown for the season. And uh, this is um, an unfamiliar sight. Now we see the person who received the touchdown now going for the one point conversion afterwards. And the kick is up and good. So just with halftime upon us, the Rhinos pick up a touchdown with the extra point conversion, which uh, really puts us back in the ball game at 21 to 26. With a kickoff to come, not a lot of time left in this second, in the second quarter leading up to halftime. So um, we'll see what the we'll see what the Rhinos and the Stingrays do as we wind out the second quarter. So uh, maybe what the Rhinos were doing, Sam, is giving the Stingrays a false sense of security with a 26 point or a 20 point lead. Yeah, now they've brought themselves back five points in. That's a very healthy margin to go in at half time. Let's see if they can just hold the Stingrays off here. Don't let them get any, um, any more points here just before the, uh, before the half break and then take it in at five points deficit. So we have a game here, Saturday Night Football. So, and a big scoring one at that. When you, when you get NFL games putting 46, 47 points on the board, it's a, good, it's a good night. So here we are with the Rhinos kickoff with just a few minutes left in our second quarter. Here's the kick. Nice deep kick with lots of hang time. It's going straight to the end zone. So that will be a touchback. The ball will come out to the 20-yard line. The Rhinos are starting to fire up their uh, their defensive team that's going in. Defensive team did a good job last time of stopping the ball with the uh, pick um, in the inter, uh, sorry, the pickoff interception. And that turned into a drive for a touchdown. So that's got to make Coach Sturgis pretty happy. I think the momentum has flipped now to the Rhinos. Their, their sideline seems a lot more excited now, you know, being down, you know, almost 20 points at the end of the first quarter. And now they look very, very excited. They feel like they're certainly... In this game, you know, if not, even on top of this game at the moment, even though they're down by five, you can still be... Yeah, momentum mm. momentum is swung. Momentum so, is very important. Man in motion. Here comes Taj. It's an inside handoff. Dancing outside. He's going to go for the... Oh, and a great defensive move. You saw the defender give him the sideline, but then push him back in, and that meant everybody else could catch up. So you'll see McCalmont go. He's going to go out, and then he's forced back in. And the Rhinos meet him there. So it's just short of the first down. It was a great run, nine-yard pickup. Um, but the uh, Rhinos showed their, uh, showed their defense. And important for the Rhinos now, that's, uh, that can, uh, keeps the clock rolling as well. They don't want to let up any points now. Correct, yeah, and that was, kept him in the field of play. Right, nice pickup, Sam. I don't think they need to get a turnover here. They just hold them out here, go into the half, knowing that man. they're five points down. Up yep. and man in motion. He actually, he actually jumped the gun. So it looks like it will be a false start on the Stingrays. So a little bit of a breakdown there. So when you saw the man in motion if you if you caught that one he did a stutter step and turned upfield just before the snap of the ball and that's what the refs called him on so uh, that would be an illegal motion in the backfield or in the field so we now have taj in the lineup man in motion again moving upfield and it's taj going it's all taj going to the far side of the field he's moving up but he's pulled up short and we have a flag on the play. Two flags. So it's uh, interesting what they're going to call here. We'll keep an eye on the referee. Taj out of bounds. Hard to tell whether he was pushed out of bounds and it was unnecessary roughness. We'll, uh, we'll look for the referee's call. But the uh, Stingrays are backing up, so hard to tell if they already know it is against, it's holding 
against the Stingrays. So offensive holding is a 10-yard penalty which will bring the ball backwards. You can see the ref spotting the ball at about the 14-yard line, which basically puts us at second and 14, second and 15. Stingrays are going backwards. And it's, uh, this, is, this is what drives coaches nuts when small penalties like that. Great run by Taj to come out of the backfield and turn it upfield. And yet it's all for nothing, goes back. It's a pass, it's coming up in the air, but he's going to break free of that tackle, breaks free of a second tackle, and he slides. Slides meaning he surrenders. Taj is really good at um, evading tacklers, so there was two that had him in the backfield. He sidesteps another one and then slides to make it third and nine, third and, third and eight. Rhinos have had about four sack chances on, on gonna, our touch board in tonight. And clearly you can tell they've got him under pressure because he's having to scramble because that was, that was a broken play. That was not meant to be him going upfield. Nope. So uh, let's see what the Stingrays can do. It's second down, third, oh, sorry, third down and nine. He's setting up for the pass. He's fading off to the side. He's got a man open, but it's intercepted. Rhinos have got the ball at the 40, at the 35, at the 30, at the 25, at the 20. He's going to push it inside. You bet he is. He's going to go for it, and he is absolutely leveled at about the two-yard line. We do have a flag on the play, so that play is coming back. And it is unfortunate, so the Rhinos get very excited that they've almost scored before halftime. But unfortunately, that is all coming back. So coaches are trying to keep the Rhinos back under control. Signal from the uh, referee is basically holding on the defense on the return. So 10-yard penalty from the spot of the foul. That's going to hurt. It is first down for the Rhinos. You know they're going to go for points, Sam. What do you think they're going to do? Firstly, Chim James, two interceptions in two weeks. Um, I don't know how much time we have left now, but I, I'd say this: you, you can just go for a couple deep shots here if it's you know, you know, within 30 seconds. You know, maybe. Oh, that's the two minute. The oh, that, that was the two minute, two minute warning, warning that we got. So. Okay. Uh, the two-minute warning basically means a few rules change for gridiron football, not the least of which is they will stop the clock uh, when they have to move the chains. They will stop the clock when the ball goes out of bounds. That's all normal. Um, I think the Rhinos do not have any timeouts left. The Stingrays have two. However, the Rhinos on the attack, they will use the edges of the field. Is that right, Sam, to, um, to move the ball forward but not chew up the clock. Yeah, get your receivers um, on out routes. You know, Max Williams and now Tom Fenwick out to the left. Get them on out routes. Go to the sideline. Quick completions. You know, two-second release out from Mitch Bradford. Just aggressive movement from the, uh, from the quarterback of the football. So and the just sl slow yardage. You've got time. Two minutes just starts now. It's a inside fake handoff. A nice slant pass straight up the outside and a great pickup of uh, almost 20 yards. So Mitch Burrows fakes the inside handoff, slants it out to the sideline, and we get a nice clean run up the sideline, and the only mistake was we didn't get out of bounds. However, we got the mileage, and you can see the Rhinos are doing a quick offense reset. So the clock keeps running, and uh, the Rhinos have still got a minute and a half to go in order to get the, see if they can get some points. And uh, Sam, do you know from experience at what point are they in field goal range? Uh, Tom Fenwick, I'd say, well, Mitch Bradford. Tucks I, the ball down. I would say maybe about now. Maybe five oh. more yards, but I, I think you would be quite confident. AFL background, punting is, you know, AFL players usually go into punting. Punting is a lot more different from, uh, from, uh, from kicking, uh, yep. but I, I'd still say you could get a good boot on it, at least a good attempt from Tom Fenwick. He's a... It's a solid boot of the ball. So Mitch running out of bounds stops the clock. We uh, will basically show that we've got about a minute to go in the game. And a minute can last quite a while. And it looks like Coach Sturgis has called the Rhinos' last timeout of the half. So he wants to get his troops together. He sees something that he wants them to work on because if they can put some points on the board, they could actually take the lead. 
and that would be a game changer as far as as far as football goes because that means the momentum is clearly shifted as you pointed out Sam it looks like the rhinos have actually got the momentum and they look like they will go into the um, into the halftime break it with the lead that is an insane turnaround from the rhinos and credit to to Coach Sergis, he has been hyping his guys up on the sideline there. He's been very excited for them tonight. And um, also Carlos Matos down on the sideline for the Rhinos as well. He's getting a lot of congratulations. He's continuing off of his good week last week. Um, the great performance this week, picking up that first down a few plays ago on the dump off. But this would be great for the Rhinos going into halftime if they can jump the lead here. So with a quick offense, and we basically have about a minute to go before halftime in terms of real running time, it'll still take us a couple of minutes to get there, but the Rhinos are going to be setting up for some quick offensive strikes. And you can see Mitch, he's actually stepped back a little bit farther in the shotgun position to give himself some clearance because the Stingrays are showing blitz. Whether they come, and they are coming, he knows it, it's over the top, and it's a little too high. So the incomplete pass will stop the clock. He actually only lost about five or six seconds. Do want to say thank you to our sponsors uh, today. Calling All Sports has produced our uh, technical team who is here helping the game come to you live stream. OzMV providing sporting and uh, automobile equipment for the enthusiasts. Lots of sponsors for both the, spon uh, for both the Rhinos and the Stingrays helping produce this live stream event. Saturday Night Football from Brisbane, Australia. It's just a beautiful Saturday night as the Rhinos line up with just a little bit of time left in the half. Taj takes the snap and he's going to get into a world of trouble. Not only sacked, but down in the middle of the field so the clock will keep running. He got monster there. That was... I believe both Sam Holloway and also um, and also Daniel Harris in there to um, get Mitch Bradford under pressure there and take him down. So Mitch did not have enough time to um, to get past the oncoming blitz, and clearly the secondary coverage was enough man to man to uh, to take away the passing target. So time's running down for the Rhinos. Let's see what they can do here. Mitch in the shotgun position. He's going to have to fade off to the sideline. There's the open man on the field, and he's going to fall out of bounds. And we have a flag on the play. Flag deep in the secondary. Don't know what was going on, but we will wait to see what the referee calls. So that will stop the clock with not very much time left in the half. The referee's conferring. We'll find out exactly what the call is. But multiple flags fell in the secondary. And they're uh, checking on numbers in order to, to make the call. Currently, we have a pass reception that took it down to about the 12-yard line, falling out of bounds, which did stop the clock. But the penalty will also stop the clock. Now it depends on how the referees call it. Max Schlatter testing out that left hand as well. Seems to be okay. Yeah, he's showing Mitch Bradford there what's so referee is him. walking it, walking our way to give us a signal. Let's see what the answer is. Um, but they're moving the ball, moving the ball down the field. So we have a dead ball foul against the Rhinos, which is unsportsmanlike conduct. And they're going to walk it backwards. So that will be from the. And the ball is coming back. It's not, it's not pretty. And he's still walking. I still don't understand. He's now counting it off from the line of scrimmage. So not only is the pass play negated, but it's going to. It's going to push the ball back to almost midfield. So, unfortunately, that scores the that scores the end of what was a very good-looking drive for the Rhinos. A bit of a disappointment, Sam. Yeah, they've still got the momentum here. If they can take a few deep shots, just put the secondary of the of yeah, the Rays under under notice here. So uh, it's fourth and twenty-five. So wow. it looks like they're oh, yes. going to go to a punt. 
Sorry, I didn't pick that up. Yeah, same here. <laughs> I, I didn't realize that they'd lost the down as well. There's so, there's so much going on that still not quite clear on what the refs were calling. So the Rhino special team is a little bit disarrayed. It's a punt. Gets it up in the air. He's angling for the corner, which is a beautiful thing. Goes out of bounds inside the 10-yard line. So that's what punters like to do. It's called a coffin corner. However, we're pretty sure that it's going to be one or two plays for the Stingrays, and it will be halftime. So Rhino's defense coming back out on the field. Let's see what they can do to shut down the, uh, shut down the Stingrays offense. You'd think, Sam, that the Stingrays will basically just go for some set plays. They're not going to try to go for a score. What do yeah, you think? I, I don't think they'll do much here. Maybe just a couple runs up the gut, see if they can create something, maybe a couple, maybe one or two deep shots. Haven't seen Jaden O'Rourke tonight. Maybe this is where they try him out. Maybe they're just waiting to get him into the second, uh, into the second half. Be a, it will be a very interesting second half, though. So first and 10 from about the 10-yard line, which is great for a defensive position. Everybody drops back into coverage. Taj is going long ball. He's got an open player, and he's got a reception to the 40-yard line. So that is a 30-yard strike. And it continues with the Stingrays taking a timeout. So the ball and the ball and the player landed in the field to play, did not get out of bounds. So the Stingrays have used a timeout to stop the clock, thinking maybe they've got a strike. So that was a 30, 35 yard pickup with uh, an open player, even though almost every defender dropped into coverage. Sam, what, what do you reckon broke down? I think a uh, um, defensive back on the out, out on the outside just lost his coverage on Matt Major there. He's a great run, route runner, Matt Major. He's a good deep option as well for Taj Borden. Um, so that that aspect definitely coming out there for the for the quarterback. And now it will be interesting to see just what happens at the end of this uh, first half, first down around midfield for the Ravens, see if they go for a Hail Mary type of play or if they just you know close out this first uh, first half. All right, well, defense is going to have to line up for at least one or two more plays. Uh, we can see that the see that the Stingrays most likely are going to see if they can make something come out of this, which is um, definitely what they're going to shoot for. Shotgun formation. Here's the big pass. Long ball. What an arm. The pass was so close to being good, in which point it would have been a touchdown. It's in and out of the hands of the receiver. And unfortunately, you can see this. It is right there on his hip, but it does not go, it does not go well. So unfortunately, for the uh, Stingrays, that ball is going to come back, even though Taj had a big shot, and it is halftime. So that was the halftime big play. So... Um, Summary for, uh, for our viewers, Sam, is that the Stingrays got off to a hell of a start with the onside kick that turned into a touchdown. Scored a couple of more times there in the first quarter. The Rhinos were able to put the drive together and lay it in for a touchdown. We uh, then had the Rhinos coming back strong with two more touchdowns in the second quarter, but the, uh, but the Stingrays pulled up with one fluke and also got in on the board. So our halftime score looks like 26-21, but the Rhinos are coming back. Well, this game is already better than both of the previous Thursday night football games we've had over in, in the NFL, but I'm loving it. This is a great game, and I cannot wait for what the second half will bring. Um, it has definitely been a, a bit of a defensive matchup. You've had gr great energy on the Rhinos' defense as they've got back into this game. That interception in the end zone was... I reckon great for for their energy. McCann Garrigan very excited about that. Uh, then you've got Mitch Bradford, who was you know really asserting himself as the uh, as an of offensive general out out there for for the Rhinos, and that's exactly what I expect from him, and yeah. that's exactly what he's good at. So it's really good to watch watch him do that, and um, will be really really interesting to see how the second half goes. So uh, we'll get some coaches' reports, but uh, this is Mark and Sam here in the commentation booth, and we will see you all very shortly for the kickoff leading into our second half. Uh, look forward to seeing you on Saturday Night Football here with Gridiron in Brisbane.
Okay, and welcome back to the second half of Saturday Night Football here in Brisbane, Australia. We're really looking forward to the temperature dropping. The cool breeze has picked up, so dew will form on the ground. It'll be a little bit slippery. My name's Mark Vollmer. I'm here with Sam Atchison. Sam, what are, we, what are we looking for in the second half? Well, Rhinos came back in the first half and really made it a contest. They had a couple of opportunities to go out in front after being behind by pretty much 20 points um, about... Um, the start of the second quarter, and now it is it is a game, and I cannot wait for the second half. Big kickoff, got dropping all the way down, and it will go into the end zone. So it looked for a moment like the uh, Stingrays were going to return it, but no, they've let it go dead, which means it will be picked up at the 20-yard line. So touch back, and what do you expect to see out of the Stingrays as they come under the second half? I'm not too sure. They've really been splitting between running and passing. I think running's been a little bit more of their game tonight. I would, I've would. i been saying the whole game, I'd love, to, love for them to go to Jaden O'Rourke. I, I have a feeling that maybe this might be his half. They've just waited for him to kind of feel into the game, see how they're going to put coverage on him, and then use him as a weapon in, in you know, long yardage plays, maybe first down, just put him put it up to him. He's going up against Saul Wembe, who is not very tall, and you're going up against someone who's six foot eight. so you are barely ever going to be tall enough to go up against yeah, the, that. So. The size difference right there will give you a distinct advantage. So Taj Borden, back at quarterback for the Stingrays, he's dropped in, and now we've got the long ball coming down, and it is a catch and run immediately coming off of the halftime break. And just as Sam predicted, it is a long ball to, um, to Jaden O'Rourke. It looked like it was going to be broken up, but unfortunately for the, for the Rhinos, and it looks like we got an injury as well for our defense. I so predicted it. I, I said go, to, uh, go down to so Jaden O'Rourke. I am now Tony Rowe. No, I'm joking. Um, that, that was a, gr a great throw as well. That was perfect. That's exactly what you want to do to someone who is that tall. You want to put it up above the, above the defensive back yep. and make it a contest not, not even a contest for the, uh, for the receiver to go up there. And Jaden O'Rourke has six foot eight height. I keep saying it, but so, that is exactly what he has. Unfortunately, Sarwa Bumbe had to come off the field. It looks like he's being treated by the first aid team as the Stingrays line up for the point after, or in this case, a conversion. So they're going to go for two points. And uh, we'll see what they come up with. But it's the inside handoff. Stopped and second effort. A's uh, forward progress is scored by the referee as he crossed the line. So even though he was tackled behind the line of the goal, he definitely was over and then pulled back out. So forward progress. Stingrays pick up six points for the touchdown, two points for the conversion, and a really brutal start to our second half as the Stingrays pick up their first touchdown to start the second half. First play from scrimmage that turned out to be a 75-yard strike from Taj Borden and uh, comes in for the touchdown. So we'll now see if the Rhinos can uh, restart, their, restart their offensive game. What sort of changes do you reckon we're going to see out of the Rhinos' offense? Well, I think they might throw it a lot here. They've, got, they've definitely got a... Um be aggressive here and this is a game you see these high scoring games over in America and that and pl uh, teams cannot get behind by two scores they have to go tit for tat as it's as it's called and runners definitely got to get at least a score here Ooh. okay so it was a deep kickoff and a nice return back out to the 28 yard line a uh, little bit of a uh, little bit of pushing and shoving going on away from the ball play However, it was a great run back from deep inside the Rhinos' territory to bring it out to the 22. There's Max Schlatter there on the return. I saw him nursing a, a sore left hand there, so he seems to be okay now. I can't s see him using that left hand at all. He's just talking at the moment. But, yeah, definitely nursing that left hand, but uh, I'd say he's all good to keep going for this game in the slot. Rhinos line up for a quick offensive uh, positioning, so it's first and 10 from the 26 yard line and the refs blow time on the whistle. We'll find out what the story is. And it looks like it's uh, setting up for the chain gang on the far side of the field. So small, 
Small time delay, and we're back in action. So you can see the Stingrays lining up with five on the line of scrimmage. They're either going to blitz. No, they're going to drop into coverage. It is a fake. And we now get a forward, forward pass. It was a forward pass from Mitch. He tried to shovel pass it forward. However, it was not to pass. And the refs have got a flag on the play, which potentially is and typically is against the offense. So we're going to hear about it. Looks like it's being stepped off. We'll look for an indication. <clears throat> so basically Mitch sweeping around to this near side or the left side of the field. And uh, umpire's having a chat with one of the offensive linemen for the Rhinos. And... Uh, what you saw Mitch doing was a, it's called a shovel pass because he doesn't throw an overarm. He just pushes the pass forward. It fell incomplete. Unfortunately, um, nonetheless, penalty on the play. We will uh, now look for the official response. And uh, still having a conversation out in the middle of the field, but it's walking off against the rhinos. So we'll wait for the official signal. Illegal block below the below the waist. So um, sometimes referred to as a chop block, Sam, but that is a dangerous move. But it's mm. uh, 10 yards going the wrong way. Yeah. One thing I will say is bringing Olafipo on in that left tackle position has been very, very good tonight. He's, I think he's pancaked his man a couple times now, and that's let uh, Mitch Bradford run run through that open open gap now. And we saw that happen there before the shovel pass. But interesting to see what they do here now on 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 first and 20. So the Rhinos back up 10 yards, um, and it's a full, fulsome 10 yards. I don't, uh, they're, uh, they're still working on spotting the ball, but it's uh, first and 20 for the Rhinos. Let's see what Mitch can come up with because the, uh, the Stingray was bringing a pretty good defensive charge. They're showing blitz, but drop into coverage. So it's a long ball Mitch is putting down the field, broken up by the Stingray's defense. Great so, timing there. Oh, sorry. Yeah, that was Jordan Appe, uh, defensive back, getting a hand on the ball. Yeah, good timing there. Turn around at pretty much the right right moment. You want to keep your eyes going down with the receiver and then turn around as the ball is thrown uh, by the quarterback. And he had a gr great, uh, great uh, hit movement there. Got back onto his receiver and was able to break up the pass there. So Rhino's having a hard time getting something started here in the opening segment of the third quarter. Taj setting up and we have a flag on the play. We'll find out what, what the referee calls on this one. It looked like from the way the whistles were blown, it was a false start. So false start on the Rhinos, which means they will back up another five yards. So. These are the kind of penalties that drive coaches nuts, Sam. Um, Rhinos have really got to settle down a little bit. Yeah, and this is going to be a really tough, tough position now for Mitch Bradford um, to uh, to assess. And it is second down. He has a little bit of move, a uh, little bit of wriggle room, uh, wriggle room, but he's just going to really have to assert himself here. Five yards out from his own, from his own and end that, zone. Yeah, and that O line is really going to have to work on. And there's another flag on the play from the near side uh, officials. So we're going to find out. However, the Stingray defense have come up really quickly to pick up that flare, pla flare, flare pass. So Mitch is going to see him fade to the right. No, he just dumps the ball out there, anticipated by the Stingray. So that was a loss of yards. But it was a defensive offside, so it technically was a free play. So the referees will gift, gift five yards back to the Rhinos, and it will stay a second down. So instead of a second down loss, it's now a second down with a five-yard gain, and the Rhinos are ready to go again. So they're going to be pushing this offense and try to catch the uh, Stingrays asleep. Look for Tom Fenwick out here. Soft zone from uh, 
that is uh, Clark Vorhe uh, Vorhe out there um, out here on the near sideline, so this will be interesting. That was Max Schlatter moved into the slot position. Max has got the ball. He's going to outrun the defenders, and he's still going. Max Schlatter going down to the 34-yard line. No flags on the play, so that's going to be a full, almost the first down, and the referee is... Just and a uh, little bit of commotion on the field, but um, the referee, so you'd see on the replay, Max is outside, but then he skips past a couple of runners, picks up a good block, and makes it to about the 34-yard line. Uh, depending on how the referee spot the ball, they've marked it as a first down. So Max does the hard yards and puts the Rhinos back in fighting position. Looks like no more problems with that left hand now. That was great agility there. Just, just prancing down the sideline there, cuts back to the inside, and smart thing to do, just go down under you know heavy pressure. Would have gone into a, a f quite a few tackles as a smaller man. That's probably the best idea after picking up you know first down there. So that, that's a great play there from, from the slot man. Coach Sturgis is having a word with his offensive team. He's concerned that maybe they're getting a little bit carried away. He wants them to stay focused. Um, so he actually went out on the field during that timeout to um, basically give them some, uh, some serious coaching. And the Rhinos are quickly lining up. Three, three wide right receivers, one here on the near side. And here comes Mitch in the shotgun position, fakes the pass. It's an option run. Up the middle for five yards. Coach Sturgis loves this uh, trips right formation. He's been with it so much tonight, and he's shows aggression. This uh, three uh, three wide right is um, is a really good um, good option for a quarterback to look for downfield, and it's really working for Mitch Bradford. He's putting together a good drive here now. It does spread the defense because they're now on a, and it's a great handoff up the front, and it's a great tackle, great open field tackle by the Stingrays. However, we've got some, we've got some movement, and it is a first down. Sam's up here in the commentating booth mm -hmm. marking first down for the refs just in case they missed it. <laughs> and we're away, so Mitch does a great job of setting up like he's going to pass, but then pa he get, just gives the ball away. And that was a great run for a first down. Defensively, the Rays really need to make an adjustment here to this trips formation. They're staying in it now. Well, they've uh, they've now committed themselves to being man to man in the secondary, and yet here comes Mitch. He's going to he's going to stretch forward for a at least a one yard gain. So Mitch saw the secondary collapsing, but then spotted. Just a little bit of running room here on the left side of the field. So that last, uh, the run prior to that was by Carlos Matos, who's our in import. And basically now Mitch is running, sidestepping, and basically still open field running. Mitch is showing us what he's got. Stingrays try to strip the ball as he's going out of bounds. Referee intervenes. Mitch has picked up a good 20 plus yards. And um, Mitch is taking this on his own shoulders. Broad shoulders, as you said, he's the general out there. Sam, what do you make of this? Uh, I love watching a quarterback go up against a defender and have a little bit of a, bit of a spat there in his face. I was up against Trevor Tafua, number 30, out there for, for the Rays. And yeah, Mitch Bradford, is he's commanding this offense now. He's a field general at the moment. And I love watching it. I love watching quarterbacks being able to do this. And then he's moving on his feet as well. It is, it is very good to watch for Mitch Bradford. So Rhinos are lining up with uh, shotgun formation. Three wide receivers to the right-hand side, one here on the near side. Let's see what Mitch comes up with now. He goes right to the flats, and we have an open field run, a little bit of spinning. You know that the Stingrays are going to be trying to strip the ball, but that is great for a first down, and we have a Stingrays player who's uh, down Got hit a little bit hard on that one, and it looks like he's just winded, but otherwise getting back up into the field of play. And the Rhinos are wasting no time. They're going to a real quick, no huddle offense. First and goal from the three or four yard line. 
Oh, it looks like it's about on the five. So let's see what the Rhinos do. Staying in the trips formation, this side out to the left. And it looks like they're getting ready for a blitz, but we'll see what the we'll see what the Stingrays do. Drop into formation. Max sees the open player, but cannot. It was tipped by the secondary. So uh, bonus points for the Stingrays. The secondary saw that pass coming through and tipped it. So, Sam, I've noticed both of the teams seem a little fired up here in the second half. Well, it's a bit, of a, a bit of a rivalry now, the Gold Coast and Brisbane. Um, and I love watching it. I played um, juniors last year against the Gold Coast in my first game, and they bring so much energy. Coach Brewster was the, the head coach of that team as well and really gets his guys hyped up. And now Levi Sturge is coming over from America. You know, grew up around football and, and around that Kansas area, and they breathe, live and breathe football over there. And... Um, yeah, they're definitely getting hyped up for this, and it is a great matchup, and it's a really good game as well now. And uh, it looks like it's going to be a drop for a loss, so the uh, Stingray saw that one coming, and um, we're in on the defensive play. So that play didn't set up too well, Sam, and it looks like it was dropped for a loss Still second and goal to go now from about the eight-yard line. So here we are in the third quarter. The Stingrays have scored, which has pushed it up to uh, two scores now, 36 to 21. Still in striking distance, especially if Rhinos can put some points on the board here. That would be a good sign. Get the ball away just as the play clock is expired or is expiring. It looked like an inside handoff, but it was Mitch coming to the outside, but he's dropped for a loss. Lots of head shaking going on, and the referees are going to come in and have a bit of a conference. So um, it looks like it's going to be whistle on the play. We're going to wait for the uh, referees to... Um, Signal something, but instead of a loss, it's going to be replay the down at about the nine-yard line. So it is still second and goal to go from the nine-yard line. Strange penalties being called out this uh, for this uh, both of these teams, and that they're they're getting caught up in the momentum or in the energy behind this one. Mitch is back on the field with the play. Let's see what the Rhinos come up with. Sam, what do you reckon? You want to put up, pull out your crystal ball? Tell us what's coming. Third down, jump ball out to Max Williams. Get him on a corner route. So here we go. Mitch is standing in. He's going to put it up in the air, and it's going to be picked off. And unfortunately, Max was rushed, and uh, we have a, a great interception defensive back for the Stingrays. Coming in, that was Clark Vorhar, Vorhar who uh, drops in front of the receiver in order to get the pick, uh, forced out of bounds at about the two-yard line. So, unfortunately for the Rhinos, not to be, not to be in terms of scoring position. Now it's up to the defense to see if they can shut down the Stingrays. They needed points there, and that was the perfect, perfect position for them to get it. You need a jump ball there. You don't put it across the face. You've really got to. Uh, unless there is a lot of separation on the on the outside there, that's right. you usually try to get a jump ball into the end zone, just a floater up, make a contest on it for a taller receiver. There's no real height for the receivers for the Rhinos. They've all kind of around that five eleven mark. You know, for Jaden O'Rourke, it's a little bit a little bit easier, but for the Rhinos, oh. it's unfortunate. Great front line defense shut down the run very quickly. Um. Noticing a personnel change, Nate Ashton Miles on the defensive corner is back in the game. He was out for a good portion of the first half, but he's come in for the Rhinos defense uh, here on this uh, left side corner. And um, he's got his work cut out for him, doesn't he? This will be uh, interesting. Looking to see who he's lined up against. Jaden O'Rourke, man to man on this side, whether. Uh, whether Taj is going to make something out of this. No, Taj has got the ball. Open field. He's running. He's got some mileage here. He's up to the 40. 
out of bounds at about the 38-yard line. So defense was holding on the pass situation, but Taj was able to find the open space and slice across the field out of bounds just on the 30-yard line. So he picks up the important yardage to get out of deep in their own territory. Not sure if that was a design run there for Taj Board. I think he dropped back to pass and then saw an opening. But there was a bit of a break there for Jaden O'Rourke. He got he got he got out of his man, Nate Ashton Miles, into the game now. But hopefully he can um, get a bit of momentum against him. He's now out on the other side now. I believe that's up against Matt Major. Looks like they're going to be checking down those wide receivers fairly aggressively to make sure that they stop them from getting into a route. Long ball going down the field, and it is clean caught, and it is going to go for a touchdown. So that's a 70-yard strike from Taj Borden straight through to the Stingrays, and they convert the interception to a touchdown, which is um, an awesome turnaround. So that's Matthew Major picking up on in stride. Taj really nailing that one perfectly, outrunning the defense. And um, at this point in time, Stingray's taking a bit more command control back into the game. Taj Borden loves Matt Major as a, as a deep option, and he's got a great, great deep throw, uh, Taj Borden does, and that was gorgeous. His, his deep shot is, is something to watch, and I absolutely love watching that. And Matt Major, great pace, great, beautiful put out in front of him as well, and Matt Major is a great wide receiver. And that's his third touchdown for tonight. He's definitely one of the... Definitely one of the best players in the league at this point. And it looks like, uh, yes, it's true. The Stingrays are in for the two-point conversion. So that will put the Stingrays at 44 points to 21. So just double where the uh, Rhinos are. And unfortunately, that's going to make it a real tough, tough run if the Rhinos are going to come back from this one because we are deep into the third quarter. And, uh, and it's basically now a question of what can the Rhinos do, Sam, to, uh, to resurrect something out of this game? I think they have to score here, and it has to be seven, po oh, it has to be seven points or even eight. Well, I reckon you go for eight at this point. Um, it starts with a good return here. Matt Schlatter and uh, that's Riley Wood out there. Need a good return here. No mistakes, just good kickoff return, and then give it over to Mitch Bradford, who has had a very solid game tonight other than the interception on their previous drive. Now it's just time for him to be that field general that he is and, and get them down the field. Yeah, and he was under a lot of... Uh, and there's a flag on the play from the kickoff. So depending on what we see out of Riley here, whether he can make a good run back. And he picks up some, picks up some great yardage, so about a 25-yard return. But it's possible that they will uh, re-kick this one because there was an infraction back at the kickoff. So uh, we'll see what the referees say. Max picks up 25 yards on that return. That's a good. That's a good sign. That's what you were looking for, Sam. It was a good return. There's a little bit of a, a little bit of a, a scuffle going out there on. Oh, not a scuffle. Maybe just a little bit of energy out there on that far sideline from the from the Rays. <laughs> and a, a bit of a sarcastic clap there. I'm not too sure what they're conferring about here, but there was that one just before the kickoff was uh, was taken, and then and then a couple out on that far sideline. So it will be interesting to see what the refs call here. So uh, basically what happened was we see a flag on the field, which was behind where the kicker was kicking, but we also see a flag here at the 40-yard line, which signifies something happening during the kickoff return. So um, it may be that it's going to be up to the refs to tell us whether they're offsetting penalties or whether there is something that's going to be revised. They're currently discussing what are the options, and our Rhinos captain is there listening to the options. I think one of them might have been um, on sports and like conduct on a Rhino. There was the that sarcastic cheer from the from the Rays might have been a bit of heckling for him. You know, it will be interesting to see and re kick here. Okay, so uh, referees have conferred. It is going to be a re kick, and we have. Penalty against the Stingrays. So it's going to be back him up five yards, but there was also a dead ball foul against the Rhinos. 
False start, so somebody jumped the gun. However, the penalty against the Rhinos means that the Stingrays move the ball forward 15 yards to get a different kickoff. I've never seen a false this start on a kickoff before. And we've never oh, seen an offsetting <laughs> penalty that turned out to go against yeah. the... Uh, they're usually offsetting penalties, but we'll see what, uh, we'll see what happens now. The... Stingrays get a bit of an advantage. Now the Rhinos will be deep in their own reception or they will just let it go through as they do. So it will be through to the... This is a fiery game now. Yeah, the, uh, both teams are getting a little bit passionate. And uh, the refs... Uh, I did catch one of the refs at halftime. They're saying that they want to um, keep the game under control. So... Uh, We'll see how we play this one out. The Rhinos will take over on the 20-yard line, first and 10. And they are, unfortunately, down 21 to 44. The uh, Stingrays have definitely been able to show some offensive firepower in the second half, whereas the Rhinos have sputtered a little bit. Where do you think the Rhinos are going to go on this set of downs, Sam? Got to go to your receivers here. I don't... I Unless Riley Woods gets a really good break, I think it might actually be Carlos Madison. Yes, it is yep. Portuguese men out at the back there behind Bradford. The momentum has definitely swung back for the Rays now, but Mitch Bradford has it in his hands now. He can really, really swing it back in the favor of the runners. So we have that uh, trips right, which is the three wide receivers. Over the middle we go, and it's up the front. So that's a Nice stop by the uh, defense uh, linebacker coming out of cover for the Stingrays. Um, and uh, basically, that was Nata Togafu stepping in to uh, collar the tackle with a five-yard gain, four-yard gain. So uh, we'll see if, the, um, see if the Rhinos can start to string together a couple of short plays and just get some momentum back because they've got to really get themselves rolling. Adjustments made by the Stingrays, so they got four down linemen, and they're showing blitz, and it is to the outside, oh. and it is another stripped ball. The uh, Stingrays are famous for stripping the ball, and they've done that, which is uh, de denying. So ball protection, stripping the ball. That's Trevor Taufu for uh, the Stingrays defense coming up with he holds the runner up and strips the ball away and then covers the uh, fumble recovery so stingray's playing some really solid football rhino struggling that's uh, demoralizing there for max schlatter he's on his knees on the sideline he did everything right there that was nothing more that he could have done he went into the into the defensive back, made it a physical competition. It was just a great play there by Trevor Tafua. So, so we'll see what uh, what do the Stingrays come up with? And it looks like they were going to run. Uh, sorry, pass. And now it's short work of that one, but it was a five-yard pickup. Timeout for the Rhinos as they uh, try to regroup a little bit. So um, the Rhinos defense will come off for a moment to uh, check and see what they want to do. Taj Borden, who uh, saw that the coverage was not to his liking, decided to run the ball and uh, met some stiff defense, but he was able to pick up some yardage and basically get himself out of trouble. Both of the teams are getting really fired up and... And we have a medical timeout, and we're asking. So medics have been asked to cross the field and give lend a hand to one of the stingrays that's not on the field. So um, it's just a timeout for the medics to get across the field. Meanwhile, the rhinos here on the near side of the field, they're going to stop and obviously have to have a strategy call. Of, what do you think, Max? They're going to need to do on defense. Just going to have to be aggressive here. They, the, the, their defense hasn't been horrible. They've had a few good plays in there, but then it's just like deep ball plays with Matt Major. Um, you know, that jump ball from uh, Jaden O'Rourke. 
good running from Vernon McCalmont, but they've had some good plays in there. They had that um, end zone interception. So they've just, you know, a good thing with uh, football is, you know, offense can ride off of defense and defense can ride off of offense. Defense have got to make a statement here to give their offense a bit of, uh, a, a bit of confidence and then they can get back yep. onto the field. So there's the long ball pass to the outside. There's Jaden who's got the ball, lands on his back, and he's down at about the two-yard line. So as we've said before, you'll watch Jaden at the top of your screen go down the line. All he has to do is basically go up in the air, and it's six foot eight. There's not a whole lot that a defender can do as long as the ball's in the air. We have a rhino down here on the near side of the field at about the 35-yard line, but we'll stop the ball, or stop the game while we attend or see the Rhino player attended to. Meanwhile, it would appear that the Stingrays are down at about the eight-yard line um, with a pass play to Hayden O'Rourke. Michael Ballinger down there, outside linebacker for the Rhinos, number 55. Good to see the Rays player go, go over and check on him. So both teams will take a knee, which is the tradition here in gridiron football, which basically acknowledging that one of their comrades are down and it will be just a moment for everybody to stop and catch their breath. Water goes to the both of the teams that are playing. Stingray's offense have had some of those big plays, Sam, and they just seem to crack those big plays, which takes the wind out of the sails. Yeah, the, the, it's just been a few plays on, on offense for the Rays that have really, you know, yeah, as you say, got the win out of the sails of the Rhinos' defense, and they've been okay tonight. They haven't, they they've done well consistently. Then there's just those, just those plays in there that just really, really, really kills them, and um, it, it's going to be a tough one for them to get back in it. I, uh, you know, late in the third quarter here, they're going to have to do something here on defense to get their offense back on the field and then start to put some points up. But I think the Stingrays have probably done enough tonight to get the win. But I have seen. Big comebacks in football so far, watching it for the last few years. And, you know, you never say never with this game. 23 points can be overturned. Well, it is three, uh, tr uh, three touchdowns with the two-point conversions, which would put them back in front. Um, that will require a defense shutting down the Stingrays as well as their offense finding, finding some drive capability. And or, as you pointed out, um, mostly it'll be about Mitch finding some of his long strike passes because he's got the arm to get the ball downfield. He's also got to fight the coverage. And I spoke to him after the, uh, their game in um, Karina a few weeks ago, and I asked him, why do you go for the deep ball so much when you could go for a shorter option? He said he's a sucker for the, uh, for the, uh, for the long shot and the, and, like, the very exciting, exciting pass. So this is where he could really, really use it here. And, you know, it's never a bad thing to have that in your arsenal. He's got a great arm on him. So this will be really, really interesting to see if he gets back out on the field, which he should do. And, well, they definitely will. Short, short yardage here for the Rays. They'll so Mike Ballinger up. coming off the field under his own power, which is a go always a good sign. Uh, he's probably going to have to um, be checked out by the Medicos or by the team trainers just to make sure he's good to go. So the Rhinos defense now in a goal defending position, first and goal from the four yard line. Um, Max has got lots of options up his sleeve, not the least of which is his trusty running back. So um, he's got horsepower in the backfield as well as uh, some passing options. So Taj Borden there, a low snap going straight up the middle and it's in for a touchdown. So that's uh, Vernon McElmont. In for, I think that would be his second touchdown tonight or third? I believe that's his second touchdown second for tonight. Second touchdown, yeah. so. If not his first. So great capitalization by the Stingrays to get the ball downfield and take it in for the touchdown. They will go for the two-point conversion, which is their style. And um, that means that the uh, Stingrays have scored in every, in every quarter so far. Now, the uh, Stingrays will go for the two-point conversion, and uh, Vernon will be there in the backfield. You'd be thinking it's going to be a walk-in for him, but then O'Rourke is over on the side. Nope, Taj has got it. He sees the open space, and he's in for the two-point conversion. So Taj basically takes it home, and we now have 50, 50 points on the board for the Stingrays. Where, where to from here, Sam? Uh, I think the Stingrays have done enough to win this game now. I think it's just about you know putting a few good good drives together now for Bradford and just 
put a little bit of confidence back into this uh, into this offense. They haven't they haven't played awful, awful tonight. You know they've put twenty one points up on the board. That's still uh, it's still a good effort from them. So now it's just about putting a couple good drives together and and then um, maybe uh, you know tightening this deficit now. But yeah, I think the Stingrays have definitely done enough uh, to, uh, tonight to win this game. Yeah, it, it will be a long week for the Rhinos, um, primarily because I think they came into this game with high expectations of it being a, a real shooting match. And at least by halftime, it, you know, both you and I were thinking, all right, they're back in the game. And boy, they've uh, just really struggled in the second half to keep the offense on the field and then to shut down the Stingrays. So here we are with a kickoff. Long and high kickoff. Bobbled at the 10 yard line and it's going to create some difficulties, but now we have an open field run and we basically have up to the 25 to the 30 open field down at the 26, down at the 26 yard line. There was a very, very big discussion between Coach Sturgis and Mitch Bradford along with the receivers. They've definitely got a few things planned here. I think it's a little bit too late now, but you know, you can still get a few few points up on the board just to show that your offense is still still capable of scoring, and they have been tonight. So yep. hopefully they can put a, a drive or two uh, um, here together just going into the fourth quarter. So uh, most of you might have noted that Chime James has got that big mitt on his left hand. Um, I believe that was a broken thumb, but he's uh, continued to play. So we uh, don't hold it against them that he had a hard time catching that ball, but his open field running really shows what he's good at. And there's the pass up the middle by Mitch. Good, no, not good. Thought it was an eight-yard gain, but it is whistled incomplete. So back to the line of scrimmage, second and 10. So Mitch put that ball in where it needed to be, but unfortunately just a little bit low for the distance he was going. Second and 10 from the 26-yard line. Rhinos lining up with three wide receivers on the left and one wide and a slot on the right. Stingrays are showing blitz, but drop into cover. So Mitch has got something to do, but he's going to be dragged down from behind. The Stingrays defensive line definitely finding their way through that O-line of the Rhinos. Sam Holloway is fifth sack now for the season. That puts him outright leader in, in the league now. Great defensive front for the for the Stingrays. That was something I said at the start of the game. They haven't been as prevalent tonight. Mitch Bradford has done well in veining the pressure. He's been taken down a couple times, but now now they're really strutting their stuff now, going with the forefront. Mitch has been rushed, and you can see that they've definitely got the flankers and wide receivers. Mitch is solo in the backfield. It's that it's that Stingrays front line, but Mitch goes down the field. And uh, takes out the coach from the coach Brewster on the far side. But Mitch was lining up for somebody who didn't make a cut. And so the ball goes wide and uh, takes out, with a little bit of humor, it takes out the, uh, off the coach for the Stingrays. So we're now looking at fourth down and 15. And with the field position, uh, Sam, it looks like we're going to be back in a punting situation. Yeah. So three and out for the three and out for the uh, rhinos basically means that the stingrays have started to find their secret uh, secret attack weaponry for shutting down the rhinos offense and getting Mitch, Brad Mitch Bradford out. So that one sails out of bounds and the referee on the far side of the field marking where it went out of bounds. But we have a rhino player down and uh, we'll call the medics out onto the field. Mike Bellinger again. He, I think the injury that he was nursing after he came off was potentially a back. Now this looks oh, to be looks, cramp. Yeah, it looks Ooh. like cramps. So um, hopefully it's nothing more than cramps, but otherwise Mitch may have thought that he could get back into the game, but not quite. So the ball that went out of bounds on the punt, uh, the referee marked it at the 40-yard line, which is where the Stingrays will take over on offense. And based on their past performance, they will probably work on no mercy and continue to strike down the field, putting some points on, points on the board. 
And that would be really good to watch Taj Borden, uh, Taj Borden do exactly that. Just young quarterback, a lot of ambition, put the, put, put the foot down here and just, you know, kick into overdrive and put on a few more points here. Well, it's a motivation uh, for the team because they've struggled, uh, both teams have struggled against the Ravens. But knowing that both teams came in three and one, recognizing that they both lost to the Ravens, puts them now kind of like head and head for the next in line. And mm. so, yeah, there's a lot of competition here to come up on top in this game. And while the Ravens don't look like they're going to be slowing down at any point, the Rays definitely up into that, I'd say, second position now. And, you know, the Rhinos came into this game with high hopes, hoping to use the homecoming game as, the, as, a, as a motivation, but it just hasn't worked out for them tonight. The Ravens have, uh, uh, the, Ray, uh, the Rays, sorry, have come in here and, and done a very good job on them tonight. So with the Rhinos here in uh, the, still in the third quarter, but we must be getting down to the tail end of the third quarter, uh, working on, yes, it is, <laughs> working on Ballinger there, who was struggling with a cramp and definitely will be coming off. And most likely that will be um, his night wrapping up uh, with leg injury. And as per normal, somebody from the Rhinos team coming out to give him a hand which is we help our teammates. And Rhino's lining up now for a defense where if they can stop them, there will be a little bit of pride here in stopping the Stingrays. Yeah, most certainly. This, this would be really good for them if they can get, uh, get a defensive stop here. Hopefully they can do something. Sting. Oh, Jaden O'Rourke. Oh, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. Jaden O'Rourke here. Looks like he's not manned up properly. Maybe Cham Janes. Will yeah, Doing deeper coverage, yep. but that will give that'll give Jaden quite a bit of space to um, make his presence known. And Taj is probably good enough to recognize that there's a mismatch, but no, he's looking down the left side of the field. We have an open, and it's a long ball strike. It's a 60-yard touchdown pass in stride. Taj doing his magic that's his fourth strike of the night i believe if i'm not mistaken sam yep i believe so it's definitely up to up to four and now if not five he's let had me let me just be basically. clear who was our receiver that would have been braden field and his family right i'm next sorry to was that off. was that field as in braden field braden field that was a very very good play from that's braden an field awesome there. play and i think that was a similar strike to what he was able to pull down in the mm. first half yep which is just fly down the sidelines take it to the Take it to the cleaners, outrunning the secondary and basically Taj hitting him in stride, which is a beautiful pass. So the Stingrays lining up for the conversion now, which will be to put another two points on the board. They've been stopped once before. However, they've been fairly prolific. Juggled the snap. Taj is going to have to come out to the far side. Is he going to make it? The referee is here on the sideline. He's saying came up short. So Taj can't convert on that one. So it's six, no conversion, six points on the board. So it is now a game of 21 to 50. It looked good, but he was just nudged out just before he crossed the goal line. So Taj Borden basically taking his version of control now at the tender age of 19, doing a great job, having been with the Stingrays for a number of years, showing that he knows the offensive system very well. He also knows how to uh, play the weakness uh, or play the limitations of his defenders. So special teams is getting ready for the Rhinos. And... Uh, if all goes according to plan, the Rhinos would love to put together a special teams return here and give the offense some, uh, some competitive and some fighting field position. Who we got in the deep back or who's in on the receiving side, Sam? Max Schlatter and Riley Wood as they have been all night. Let's see if it goes to Wood or Schlatter. Deep kick and a good kick. It bounces in favor of and so it is now a live ball. And Riley is gone. He's up to the middle of the field, taken down at the 35-yard line. Have a little bit of pushing and shoving here going with both teams are still feeling quite a bit of energy. 
Woods taking it right up to the 35-yard line. And you can see on the replay, a little bit of friendly chatter, exchanging Christmas card lists. They're at the foreground. Anything happens on a football field. Not that I have experience there. So the Rhinos, they need to line up and do something here. Sam, what do you reckon? Deep shots. Maybe just put together a good drive and just, you know, something good for film review and say, hey, we, we did something good here. And out of the context of what the, this game has become, then we can review that and say, hey, we did good here. But looking to see how Bradford does here. Well, you might not have seen it, but we'll catch it on the replay. An amazing uh, block down, which is coming in from the far side, pretty much levels one of the Stingray players. Uh, number 86 took a bit of a hit there. And uh, to his credit, he got up to, um, to, to look, after the, look after the play. However, he was really hit hard. And when you get those uh, blindside blocks, it definitely rattles rattles the cage but uh, rhinos pick up three yards on the play so second and seven from just in front of the booth here at about the 38 30 yeah, 38 yard line max has got the ball shovel pass out to the side and stingray's defense is there waiting for and now we're starting to see a little bit of uh celebration around being ahead of the game and being happy with that impressive penetration into the backfield from the defensive back. It's Christian Denson there. He's had a very, very good game tonight. I said defensive standout for the for the Rays, and he's definitely showed that tonight. So where whereas we had a gain, we um, had a loss, and looks like the referees are adjusting positions because we're moving into the fourth quarter. So fourth quarter play is now starting. Um, which will put us with 15 minutes to play. And the Rhinos are definitely going to be looking for some, some sort of uh, result here, which will, as you said, Mac, uh, Sam, give them a bit of a sense of pride that we still not, we're, we're still good to play football and this has been a learning opportunity. Yeah, that, well, they can look back at the comeback that they had in the first half and say, hey, we did a really good job with that. Then they've got to ask themselves what happened in these in this um in the second half they were definitely in the game and then on the first play of of the second half Jaden and O'Rourke with that jump ball that was just an unfortunate unfortunate occurrence and first play for him and it was a touchdown so so let's see what Mitch can come up with and they've blown the whistles uh play has gone blown dead before it even got started so we'll find out what the referees called Usually something happening at the line of scrimmage, so it's either a false start or it is an encroachment. And uh, we're waiting to see what the referees, they just blew the, blew the play dead. Now uh, we're waiting now for a, here comes an indication from our referee team. So, uh, Chatting with Mitch, who is the offensive, one of the offensive captains, I guess to understand, you know, what are the possibilities, or maybe it is a let's have a chat and settle your players down, because that's one of the things that captains are expected to do. Be responsible for the team. So we're still lining up with second and now 13, second and 12 to go. Staying in this trips formation as well. Mitch in the backfield, see if he, no pressure, coming back for the ball is a great catch taken out of bounds with a seven-yard gain. So nice pass to the outside, finding the seam. Mitch taking what he can get, drills the ball in there with uh, just enough time, and Rhino's getting out of bounds, which also stops the clock. Small things that help, and it certainly helps a team kind of keep their focus. Riley in the backfield. Mitch is going to be lining up in the shotgun again. We'll see if the uh, see if the Stingrays put some pressure on him. He had good pocket protection on that last play. Four attacking defend, and Mitch is going to have to move up. Ball is stripped. Mitch is up. 
the ball is stripped, and the Rhinos lose possession with the Stingrays recovering the fumble. So unfortunately, uh, Mitch caught from behind on that one, Sam. That was um, not what he wanted. Yeah, that was exactly what the Rhinos didn't need. They just needed to put together a good drive there, and unfortunately it stops, you know, very prematurely there. That was good hype up there for the Rays. They were really excited after that. They've definitely closed this game out now, and they can just go into cruise control, or they can put the foot down. I'd love to see them do that with uh, Taj Board in here. would show a uh, great drive from a young quarterback. And unfortunately for Mitch, because the defender came around from behind him, he really didn't see that one coming, and so he would not have been thinking ahead. You can see Stan and Tomp Tompkins walk, warming up as well. It looks like he might be into the game after this. And uh, Taj, uh, sorry, um, Mitch took a pretty big hit on one of his sacks, so it might be time for him to come out for a break, but right now the... Rhinos take a timeout while they try to um, lift their game and come up with a defensive strategy to see if they can shut down the Stingray. Stingrays offer, obviously operating with a level of confidence now that they can tackle and take apart the Sting. Uh, sorry, take apart the Rhinos. And their long ball strikes. They interestingly enough, Sam, they haven't been able to really put together a drive, but they've been able to play off yeah, it's long ball. It's interesting. I'm just thinking, is this where you try to see Taj Borden's effectiveness as a field general type of player? Because for uh, for the um, for the Rays, it's it's definitely just the deep shots and um, and just seeing us going down the field and um, being effective in that in that part of the game. But what Gold Coast could do here is really just put, try to put a good drive together, which they won't. And it was a. 25-yard pass, and unfortunately, the flag that comes down that you can't really see is going to be for most likely pass interference. It was Jaden O'Rourke here. The ball wasn't up high normally for a jump ball, but the uh, Rhinos defender was not in position and unfortunately was not looking back at the ball. He just basically was putting his hands up and was called for interference. So... Taj's pass was incomplete, but the yardage gained will put them down in striking position yet again. So that is unfortunate for the uh, Rhinos, but uh, they're now counting it as incidental pass interference as opposed to intentional. So it's just a 15-yard uh, penalty rather than a spot foul. So small benefit for the Rhinos, but we still see that that Rhino secondary is going to be struggling, especially now that they found Jaden O'Rourke. Yeah, O'Rourke's into this game now, and it's it's fun to watch as a spectator, and it shows how effective he is, just what's happened when, he, when he's been looked at. And I just saw Taj Borden look over into him now. So we'll see how he lines it up, and Taj is taking the run by himself, cutting to the outside. He's down to about the seven or eight yard line. Run completely out of bounds. And uh, to Taj's credit, there's a Rhino player who uh, took a bad fall out there, and first thing Taj did was go over and check in on him. So uh, medical team will be called to off the field. Play will most likely resume, but right now we want to make sure that it's hard to tell if that's a Rhino's player or a spectator that was hurt. But the medical team is coming in to, um, to help out. Irrespective of all of that, the ball is spotted at the nine-yard line, so it will be first and goal to go from the nine-yard line, which puts the Stingrays in striking position. So it was a Rhinos player that was injured, um, and he's being waved off the field as opposed to and it looks like it's just an ankle injury, so hopefully nothing more than cramps. All right, so Stingray's lining up, two wide receivers to the left side of the field. Uh, O'Rourke on the slot position on the right side of the field. Taj has got the snap, here it goes. Handoff up the middle, bouncing outside. Rhino stay, stay with the package and tackle him for a no gain. So... Great defense sliding to the 
left hand side of the field. Sorry, sliding to the right hand side of the field. It was great to yeah. see that was American on American there and love watching Vernon McCalmont run. He's a very explosive runner. It's a great, a satisfying uh, uh, running style that he has and it's very effective for him as well. He's had a, he's had a great night tonight. But was it insane? That's what we want to know. He has had a good night and the rhinos occasionally catch him, especially when he has to bounce to the outside. They keep him on the line. When he cuts up the middle, he finds the open space and turns it into yardage. Let's see what the uh, Stingrays can do with first and goal, and Vernon gets the ball again, and he is good for a couple of yards. Rhinos are still putting in some big hits. It's now third and goal from the six. It was, so, it was funny to see Luke Stockman pancaked his man out on that right tackle position and instantly caught up and run away. That was great to watch. So... Uh, there is no love lost between these two teams. You can see big number 84, Jaden O'Rourke, coming over here to this near side of the field, lining up, and you'd expect him in a flare pattern to go out to the corner of the end zone with just a floating ball. Here comes Taj, and Taj is going to take it up the middle, thinking, I can make this, and he is in for the touchdown. Yes, the referees have scored it. Taj basically says, I'll do this on my own. And he's crossed the plane, and contrary to rugby, all he has to do is cross the plane. He does not have to touch the ball down. That was the old, really old American football. And he, even though he was held up, he crossed the plane, and the referee on the far side marked it as points on the board. So Stingrays are up to 58 with a two-point conversion to come. Now, the Stingrays have never shown any kicking attempt so you'd expect they're going to line up for the two-point conversion and so far they're statistically extremely productive on the two-point conversion I think they've made six and they haven't on two so that's a pretty good pretty good strike rate for two-point conversion so they spot the ball at the three-yard line Taj is there with McCalmet and he does the inside handoff and McCalmet powers his way in. Far side referee says you cross the line. So the two points is good and the Stingrays come away with an additional two point conversion. Tough day at the office for the Rhino, Sam. Well, tough half of the office for the Rhinos. They've really fought back in that first half, as I said, and the Stingrays just really, really played them out of this game now and it's definitely the Stingrays game. They've matched up again um, on the 26th of November. Rhinos have a lot of time to learn what they did wrong in the second half and go down to go down to play the Gold Coast and see if they can get a victory on their home turf. And that will be a big game. Tough here is the homecoming game for the Rhinos. This is their first home game for this season in 2022. So um, you know that they were coming here for the win. Yeah, and... Um, uh, Ray said on the on their Instagram page that they were looking to ambush the homecoming, so they definitely knew exactly what they wanted to do here tonight. So it's been unfortunate for the Rhinos, but really good showing here from the Rays, just showing that they are, you know, second best team in this league. You know, the Ravens, I don't think they'll be knocked off off of that pedestal for a while, but the high kickoff coming down to the seven yard line. 15, 20, 25, nice open field running up to the 30, 35. Stingrays go for the strip, but uh, we held on to the ball. And uh, it will be first and 10 for the Rhinos at about the 37. And Simon Tompkins in at quarterback. He was warming up on the sideline about 10 minutes ago, and so they've replaced Mitch Bradford. No point risking an injury to, to your main quarterback now. Just see what the backup can do, and um, hopefully maybe he puts together a good drive to show that he's good quarterback material. So what can you tell us about Sinan? Not too much. He's, ha he's actually had a good season. They've split the load a little bit. When he, uh, he came in last week, I believe, um, when they got to a point where they were like, yeah, we're not, Bears aren't going to do anything now. It's our game. But he was a Stingrays junior. He um, uh, was part of their system. Now he's here at the Rhinos. Back up, back Sting up to... Stingrays are showing blitz, but they send three. And the Rhinos struggling with that front line uh, blocking patterns. And uh, boy, the Stingrays just blitzed through and drop, uh, drop the Rhinos for a four-yard loss. 
Daniel Harris there. He's had a great game tonight on that defensive line. Thought it was going to be Holloway and Baris, but it's definitely been definitely been Daniel Harris tonight. Number 88 out there on that left edge. So here we are in the fourth quarter, um, probably halfway through. The Stingrays have put up 30 points uh, in this second half and have shut down the Rhinos, um, which is really sad. As Sam, you pointed out, the, the Rhinos really showed they could come back. And it's now an open ball, and it's tipped and picked off. So the Stingrays defense does what they need to do. The tipped pass that is broken up and then picked up by the Stingrays returned for about a four-yard uh, return. And unfortunately, the Rhinos still not able to get something going. That was uh, Dylan Napier from the Stingrays um, who picked up the loose ball and the tip. So it was not an incomplete pass. It stayed in the air. Interception goes to Dylan, and um, he'll have one for, his, one, one for his records. He hasn't been on the charts recently, though, has he, Sam? Not too sure. I, I looked into the defense. That they are third in passing defense, but yeah, Dylan Napier's had a good night tonight. That interception uh, sums up what the... The Rays have done on this defense uh, on the defense tonight in the second half, and now bring out this offense. So, starting offense is back, and Taj picks up the ball and slides. <laughs> Unfortunately, loses his footing. As we mentioned earlier, temperatures changed just enough that the grass is probably a little bit slippery, and uh, unfortunately, Taj when he tried to turn the corner. Came, uh, came unstuck and just landed softly. So that's a loss of two yards on the play. Puts the Stingrays at second and 12. In their own territory, but um, that looked like that was something Taj was ready to do anyway. He was ready to go out wide to the right-hand side. Let's see what they come up with now. You'll see O'Rourke, number 84, slot receiver on the far right-hand side. Two receivers here on the left. Inside handoff, McCalmut is pounding, almost horse, almost horse tackled, and um, that would uh, that would have been rough. It looked like somebody got a somebody got a chunk of his um, jersey or his hair. Not sure which one it was, but it wasn't enough to call the infraction. He uh, powers his way in for a first down, so out to the 34-yard line. I think you might be missing one or two dreadlocks after that one. That was. Uh in interesting tackle attempt there. I think he was going for the back of his jersey, but there is a lot of hair yeah. <laughs> flowing on the back of that jersey. So you, you're probably going to grab a few few tufts there. So yeah, unintentional, but um, and so therefore no penalty. However, the chains move forward. The Stingrays are now first and 10 from about the 36 yard, uh, sorry, from the 34 yard line. Shotgun, and it is a pow, nice handoff up the middle finding the open territory. And uh, we had some high impact down uh, in the secondary with O'Rourke running into uh, the defensive back who has uh, gone down. And unfortunately, that um, it, I think that's going to sign off for the, the end of the evening. Rhino's getting a little bit banged up now. There's a few of them holding up. Uh, I think there's a rib maybe down there. Yeah, that maybe. was Sarah Wabumbe who um, went down hard. I think it was uh, I was either ribs or shoulder, but they're, he basically thought he was up, but he's coming out. We have another Rhino's coming off the field as well. Jara for Molly. He was the one holding his rib. I think Sars hurt, his, um, hurt maybe a uh, part of his leg here. Right. So it uh, looks like the Rhinos will have to make some replacements, which um, unfortunately for the Rhinos will put, uh, will put some more pressure on their secondary. And uh, for Taj Borden, uh, Stingray's quarterback, he's probably smart enough that he will figure out where some of those changes are and how to capitalize on that. Obviously, with a six foot eight wide receiver in Jaden O'Rourke, he's got some good options. Having said that, Jaden's only got one touchdown pass for tonight. Yeah. <laughs> he's sp he spread that around. 
Yeah, they, they've definitely spread it around. Matt Major has been lights out tonight. Jaden O'Rourke, if he would, if he got into this game more, I definitely think he would be uh, up there with Matt Major. But he, he's still done a good job. He's had that one reception for a 75-yard touchdown. But uh, you could go to him here again. But also, while putting the foot down, you don't want to risk injury to your, to your key players. So. And you got to admit that uh, Taj Borden has had an absolute screamer of a game. I uh, can only imagine that the numbers that he's put up, both running and passing, and it looks like we're getting down to the end of the game because when the quarterback takes a knee, he's basically surrendering, and uh, we must be down near the end of the game, although I haven't seen a two-minute warning come up. So a uh, little bit of a conversation, and that is the end of the game. So the referees have called it uh, based on the score and the condition of everything that's happening. Uh, so summary, what do you think, Sam? Um, what's the what's the takeaway lesson for the Rhinos? Bit of a cliche, but a game of two halves. It, Rhinos came back in. They almost took the lead there in the in the second quarter, taking it into halftime at a good twenty-one to twenty-six um, ball game, and then unanswered points of you know forty-one there, oh, 40 points there for the. For the Ravens, bit of a slaughtering, so a lot of things to review there for the for the for the Rhinos. Even though they did did some good things, I think it was just big plays that really really killed them. So a great performance by the uh, by the Rays there at the end of the game, and Taj Borden can go home knowing that he was lights out tonight. Matt Major lights out, and Jaden O'Rourke still put in a really good shift with the minimal targets he got. Players Christian Denon. Uh, and then also Daniel Harris on the defensive line for, for the Rays. They were outstanding tonight as well. So big effort from the from the Rays, and the Rhinos have a, a, a lot to that they need to review, but also a few things that they did well. I like your approach, which is let's take a look at what do we learn out of this rather than we don't need to hang our heads. We definitely have some problems or some puzzles to solve. Uh, the Rhinos will come back. They'll figure out what they need to do to improve. And as you said, with a couple of weeks to get ready for a Gold Coast reunion, um, they'll be coming with either changes, improvements, and or modifications to get a real solid game, not the least of which is be prepared for surprises. So as traditional for Gridiron here in Australia, the two teams line up at the 50 or the midfield. It's a handshake um, as well as settling of nerves. Rhinos walking away with uh, the loss on paper. Um, but as, uh, as you said, Sam, great finish for the second, uh, sorry, for the first half. A real tough second half with 30 unanswered points, leaving our final score at the Rhinos 21, the Gold Coast Stingrays 56. Uh, so this is Mark Vollmer with Sam Atchison wishing you all a great next game in your NFL career. And we uh, look forward to seeing you in the future. Good night from Saturday Night Football here in Brisbane, Australia. <laughs>